Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Harwich Board of Selectments meeting for March 9th, 2020, and ask you uh, to, uh, after I read this meeting law, I guess, as required by open meeting law, you are hereby informed that the town will video and auto taping as well as broadcasting this public meeting. In addition, anyone in the audience who plans to video or audio tape this meeting must notify the chairman prior to the start of the meeting. Uh, I see no interest in that. I ask you to join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, We'll next move on the agenda to the weekly briefing. I'll turn it over to Joe. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and everyone assembled. Um, I'm going to go out of order for a moment here just to do uh, an update for everybody. Um, and um, based on a meeting that we'll have tomorrow, Mr. Chairman, we may want to consider having this a weekly update. But I did want to provide the latest information that has been provided to the uh, health department relative to the coronavirus. Uh, as of March 8, 2020, now I know this is already dated information, however, what I'm reading is what's been confirmed for the town. As we get more information, we'll update it going forward. Uh, as of March 8, 2020, there are currently 28 uh, coronavirus cases in Massachusetts. 27 cases are presumptive positive, one case is confirmed. Massachusetts also currently has 249 individuals being monitored in quarantine. As of February 28th, Massachusetts State Public Health Laboratory received approval to begin testing patients for COVID-19, which again is a reference to coronavirus. We are now seeing higher numbers because Massachusetts is able to test for the virus. As a reminder, personal hygiene is currently the best prevention. Wash your hands often with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Clean things that are frequently touched like doorknobs and countertops with household cleaning spray or wipes. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. Use a tissue or your inner elbow, not your hands. And stay home if you are sick and avoid close contact with others. And the general public is advised that the most accurate up-to-date information can be found at the Massachusetts Department of Public Health or for them from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, as I've mentioned before, staff has been regularly working on updates and information. And um, staff will be working tomorrow, Tuesday, March 10th, uh, for a more in-depth discussion on the matter. And as we get more information, we'll be sharing that with the board and obviously the general public as, um, as events, <coughs> excuse me, as events um, warrant. Having said that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to now proceed to the sewer work improvements, uh, phase two contract updates. The contract number one, again, we're going to have a broader discussion um, in a moment under uh, public hearing and presentations. However, the weekly update for contract one work being performed by Robert P. Hour. Uh, one week look ahead, March 9th. They are continuing, uh, sewer crew number one is continuing their gravity sewer installation on Hall's Path. They are commencing gravity sewer installation on Chris Joe Beth. Mainline sewer crew number two continues their installation work on Route 137, and they are continuing through the intersection of 137 and 39. They are completing service laterals from the intersection to Continental and continue installation of the sewer main towards Austin Road. Uh, this week there will be a mix of full and partial detours and again detours exist in that area. Two week look ahead for March 16th, uh, mainline sewer crew number one will continue gravity sewer installation on Chris Joe Beth and mainline sewer crew number two will continue the work on Route 137 <coughs> working towards Austin Road with detours in place. And finally their three week look ahead um, March 23rd, sewer crew number one will continue gravity installation on Chris Joe Beth and sewer crew number two will be in and around the uh, Route 137 area. The update for contract two, uh, excuse me, phase two contract two, which is the work being performed by RJV. Their one week look ahead for uh, March 9th is the sewer crews working on uh, completing sewer work on Northeast Drive and they're working on services for Southwest and Northeast. They expect uh, detours around 137 and Church Street and they have a look ahead for next week where they're starting sewer work on Church Street and they're looking for detours around Bay Road and Queen Anne 
And unfortunately, that's all I have for their look ahead at this point. And then lastly, Mr. Chairman, we had uh, reached out to uh, representatives of the um, merchant community, and we have an update from the uh, director of the executive director of the Harwich Chamber of Commerce. So I'd like to yield some time to her, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Good evening, Cindy Williams, Executive Director of the Harwich Chamber. Mr. Chairman, Board, and Mr. Powers, as the Executive Director of the Harwich Chamber of Commerce, it is one of my many jobs to advocate and support our members and their businesses. Last week, a full media campaign began with a full color ad in the Chronicle, as well as radio spots on Coffee 100.5, which I have voiced for our participating businesses. Also, every other day, I was in East Harwich doing live Facebook videos. This campaign is so that everyone knows you can get to all of your favorite restaurants, shops, and businesses in East Harwich. These businesses are always there for all of our needs, and what I am asking the public is, yes, it, is t it does take a few minutes, but you can get here, and East Harwich is open for business. I would also ask that people do not comment negatively on our posts. Yes, it takes a little bit longer, but the employees of these businesses are looking forward to seeing you, waiting on you for lunch and dinner, helping you buy what you need. So please, don't be intimidated by the signs and detour signs. East Harwich is open for business. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. And as we said, as uh, Mr. Power said, we'll get into the traffic pattern in more detail. Uh, public comments. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I'm going to start first tonight because I just learned this afternoon that uh, Jack Brown uh, retired from a, a fin finance committee uh, meeting uh, committee today uh, for personal reasons. And uh, I want to give a special recognition. I'm sure we'll do more for Jack, but uh, I know I like to comment he was a special friend of mine, but that's nothing, nothing unique. He was a special friend to almost everyone in town individually in the town as a whole. He was uh, on finance committee for many years. He was uh, chair of the uh, Friends of the Council on Aging. He was in the Council on Aging Committee for some time. Uh, I see we have uh, some flyer here, for instance. He was uh, one of the leaders along with Angelo and doing a lot of collecting the data that uh, justified or gave uh, credence to uh, the need for uh, a new fire station in uh, East Harwich that we're all uh, very happy to have. And uh, he had, again, had to retire for uh, personal reasons, but uh, he's been here uh, a little over 20 years, and I think he was active in town. Uh, he was in, involved in town activities almost every day, as far as, I could, as far as I could tell. So I wanted to say that. And then, now I'll take uh, public comments. You wanted to, you have to use the microphone, please. Hello, my name's Clara McLarty from East Harwich. I want to speak briefly about my concerns about the sewer project, DHY, and um, housing affordability, as I see them as inter interconnected. Um, I am a registered nurse, went to Four Seas, and um, permaculture, gardener, that's what I'm really interested in. I understand a lot about uh, pathogens toxins, um, nutrient cycle, and that stuff. I've, I like that a lot. I grew up here. I live among the working class people here in Harwich. My husband's an electrician. He went to the tech. Um, and Harwich is filled with working class people like us, not completely. We have plenty of our really fancy, expensive vacation homes, but um, we have a ton of the working people Unlike maybe Provincetown, Brewster, Chatham, our neighboring towns, you can see the lines of work trucks all throughout May, you know, going up to the Outer Cape to do everything because nobody lives there who can do that stuff, can afford to live there. Anyhow, so I like that about Harwich. I think that's really a positive strength that we have in this town. And, um, I've heard that if you live on an acre of land for one year, not just, you know, having a house on it, but if you lived on that land using, you know, growing food. And Can I ask you to be very brief and as, as this comment, and we'll bring it back as an agenda item going forward on, an agenda on the, waste, item? Uh, the wastewater discussion? Okay. Well, this isn't really, 
so the big picture things are never on the agenda for discussion. Okay. This is kind of a big picture concern mm -hmm. that I, f I feel really strongly. Well, let me do this. We'll add it as a, as a broader topic to give you so we can focus some more time on it. Okay. Okay. I'll try to be brief. Do you want me to try to, to I, outline what I wanted to say? I'd rather that you uh, gave me some of your points and we'll put it on as a, a separate agenda item so we can give it the, the time it deserves. Okay. I, so I want to be sure you have your voice, but I'd rather do it where there's more involvement. All right. I don't think it should take that long, but um, basically I wanted to talk about what happens as the town becomes too expensive for working people, and I want to talk about how the sewer project is likely to cost a lot more than any of us have agreed to, and the things that have not been considered, and the best sense that me as an ordinary Harwich resident can make sense of these things. I, can't, I can read the CWMP, but it's difficult. I can, un I can kind of understand, and I'm trying to understand, but, uh, but from everything I can tell, we haven't fully evaluated our options, and, uh, and I'm really concerned about the cost and the way that's going to affect our community. And I have a lot of um, details relating to that that I'd like to share in the future. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for uh, public comment? Uh, Kevin. Uh, good evening, uh, Kevin Considine, Deputy Chief. Just reminding everybody, this Saturday at 9 o'clock, um, our law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics Massachusetts, our polar plunge, will be taking place. The plunge takes place at 11 a.m., but the festivities down there begin at 9. We'll have a nice heated tent, a heated, <laughs> uh, separate heated tent for changing afterwards, um, some hot coffee and some donuts, and uh, some good music. So invite everybody to come down. Even if you don't want to pledge and plunge, uh, please come down and support us that are. Thank you. Kevin Ware. Sorry, Red River Beach at 11 a.m. is the plunge, 9 a.m. we start. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, wait a minute. Before uh, the Lieutenant gets, are you, uh, are you going to plunge yourself? <laughs> 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 yes, and I heard somebody else did in the audience. <laughs> oh. Chief, you too. <laughs> <laughs> the Chief. The LT hasn't yet, <laughs> but the Chief has. <laughs> Um, so, so obviously we're not involved in the, f in the fundraising law enforcement torch run is, but so far we're over $7,000, which, oh, which exceeds our, our goal. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. I have to supervise the details. Somebody's got to stay dry. Uh, Deputy Chief LeBlanc, just want to give a brief update. Um, I know there's been some questions around there. The old station. Uh, is scheduled to be demolition, and the only thing we're <coughs> waiting for is the uh, utilities to be secured. And apparently, that takes a lot longer than anybody realized. So, Eversource is supposed to be within this week, possibly next week, and National Grid is sometime in the near future as well. And then it'll be down. So, yes, it's a little bit of an eyesore with the training that's been done and the roof cut, but um, we got some good practice out of it, and it is slated to come down. Just want to give the board an update. Okay, thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Announcements? We'll move on to the next item in the agenda, the consent agenda, uh, Steve. The consent agenda, um, A, vote to uh, approve the American Lung Association's Autumn Escape Bike Trek, Friday, uh, September the 25th, 2020, through Sunday to September the 27th, 2020. B, vote to approve the waiver of a building department fee associated with the David Burtwell Memorial Walk for Alzheimer's at Brooks Park on May the 9th, 2020. Fifty-five dollars the application fee for the tent that we're waiving. Second. Any discussion? Anyone from the audience? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, moving next to a public uh, presentation. Uh, Joe, I'll turn these uh, items to you. Too. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I released uh, late yesterday afternoon to the board uh, and to interested parties and endeavored to get it out to the public as quickly as I could. Uh, a memorandum that you have in your packet regarding a proposed traffic control plan for the sewer, sewerage, water, sewerage works improvements, excuse me, phase two contract one relative to routes 137 and 39 and East Harwich, and I'd like to just read that so we can um, have that out there because I have talked to folks, and uh, as I mentioned to the board last week, we would be having this presentation and discussion, so I know folks are anxious to get into it, but 
I would end with a recommendation that I would hope that you would be able to have the focus of the discussion center on that. Um, but the uh, proposal and memorandum is a follow-up to my announcement at the March 2nd, 2020 Board of Selectmen's meeting concerning a discussion to be held tonight relative to a traffic control plan. The discussion is nece necessitated by a request of the contractor for the phase two contract number one, uh, being Robert B. Hour, that the town determine that it is not possible that, quote, the contractor will allow for the maintenance of a minimum of one of one 11 foot lane of traffic for both directions, end quote, as outlined in the contract for the area around East Harwich and routes 137 and 39. And that's derived directly from that contract uh, that the town executed uh, last May. After consultation with appropriate town staff, other contract vendors, and representatives from Robert B. Hour, I have concluded that for discussion purposes, the town deems that such determination is not in the town's best interest. I met with the parties referenced above as well as several representatives from the area's merchants and the Chamber of Commerce on Monday, March 2nd to receive input on the request of the Robert B. Hour Company. I held a meeting with appropriate town staff as well as representatives of Robert B. Hour Company, CDM Smith, and Weston and Sampson on Wednesday, March 4th to discuss potential solutions to minimize the impact of the sewer work as it enters this, this phase section under the contract. My recommendation for a traffic control plan is articulated in documents provided by Robert B. Hour. I have also provided relevant contract and work session minutes for the board to rely upon during your discussion. Those documents were provided by CDM Smith. The recommended approach for the traffic control plan is a, quote, blended workflow, end quote, predicated on construction zones within the area of East Harwich along Route 137 between Austin Road and Pleasant Bay Road. All parties reach consensus as to the extent of each construction zone, zones one through four, which are outlined and provided on the drawing that was provided this evening by Robert B. Hour. While this pr proposed blended workflow approach may necessitate change orders and potential additional costs, all parties have already agreed to begin to work immediately to ascertain those cost estimates. I believe that this approach is in the best interest of the merchants and residents directly impacted by this work and the taxpayers of the town of Harwich in general. And therefore, my recommendation is that the Board of Selectmen vote to affirm the proposed traffic control plan for sewage works improvements, phase two, contract one, relative to routes 137 and 139, excuse me, 39, in Harwich as outlined and as presented by me as, a, as interim town administrator. I'd like to direct the board to the first document that's uh, entitled RBO-1. And you can see um, uh, basically a uh, narrative about what is recommended by the blended workflow. Um, you'll see on the drawings that I know that Abby and her team and others will probably speak to. But again, it's based on there being four construction zones. So construction zone one, work would progress through the Route 137 and 39 intersection toward Austin Road. The section of road would be closed to through traffic. The area would be detoured from Austin Road to Route 39 around the immediate construction zone. This work is proposed to take place during daytime work hours. Construction zone number two, work would progress up Route 137 from Austin Road to in between the Lighthouse Charter School and the Town Paint Plaza. Um, it is proposed that this work would be considered night work, which would start at 9 p.m. Uh, construction uh, zone. Bill, number if I could interrupt, when, you, sure. when you're giving a, when you're giving those options, could you give us an indication of the time frame that is the time involved of each of those? So uh, what we're talking about with night work would be a period between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. But again, that's going to be how many days? Uh, we 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 don't have a full. Uh, emphasis on the days yet. That's okay. what we're going to hear from the, the general discussion. Okay. And I'm and I'm reading piecemeal from the document because I will expect that representatives from Robert B. Hour as well as the other contract vendors will speak to more details. But for everybody here assembled, I just wanted to give a sense of okay. what the zones were and what areas that covers. Uh, so again, construction zone two is uh, Route 137 from Austin Road to in between Lighthouse Charter School and Town Payne Plaza. Uh, this uh, traffic control plan proposes there for to be night work uh, relative to that area. There's other discussion that will take place on that zone. Construction zone number three, work would progress from Sherwood Road to just past Round Cove Road. Uh, this was one area where there was uh, unanimous understanding that uh, due to the depths of the sewer main, there is no safe way to get vehicles past the construction operation. So this is one of the areas where all parties agree that there would be a requirement to close the road and detour in there. 
and that's simply because there is no way to safely create a lane uh, and to do that work. Uh, that area would still be open to residents and residents would be directed uh, by the traffic detail officer. And then last of the zones is construction zone four. Work would progress from Sherwood Road to just past the Lighthouse Charter School. It would in, uh, involve a partial detour. Um, inbound traffic from exit 11 would be allowed through the work zone by um, potentially driving on the road, sh road shoulder area. Uh, outbound traffic would follow a detour around the construction zone. Again, that's just a very high level um, dissertation, if you will, of the zones. Um, all the parties um, did great effort. Robert B. Auer, uh, CDM Smith, and, and no less than our staff, um, who always does great work, but uh, performed yeoman's task. If you remember, this uh, issue came about um, on February 24th, and so within a short period of time, um, we were able to assemble everybody uh, for a resident uh, merchant meeting on March 2nd, and then follow up meetings last week, which now brings us here tonight. So I just want to say, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, you know, this is not a uh, simple matter, uh, and this is not a project and a discussion that is without um, uh, emotion or concerns. Uh, my hope, however, is that we've reached a compromise, which as we learned on Saturday at the budget meetings, which means no one's truly happy. Um, I think we've achieved that, but I think we have a very workable compromise. And so as you open this up for public discussion, I would hope that it can be centered around the recommendation that I'm presenting this evening. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I'll open up first to uh, my fellow board members. Uh, Michael, Steve, please. Steve. I guess I might hear what the public discussion yeah, is. Yeah, so it's got to be public. Okay. Looking for public, uh, we'll take that guidance in. Uh, Abby, you want to uh, give give some feedback from where you are on this? Um, would you? Would you? Yeah, go ahead and. Yeah. Yeah. Either one. Hi, um, my name is Abigail Rose. I am the project manager for Robert Biauer Company for the uh, sewer construction project. As you know, uh, Robert B. Our Company was awarded the project to install a little over 26,000 feet of sewer pipe. Um, right now, we're about 41% complete. The hardest portion of the project is behind us. When we um, met with the merchants, I tried to express that. The, the deepest, slowest, most, um, I guess, destructive piece, if you will, is through. We're starting to clean up, put everything back together on the opposite side of 137, and now progressing into the um, mixed use of residential and commercial area. And it's pretty much the longest stretch of the project, but it's, it's the last stretch. Um, I presented the uh, town and CDM Smith with what I thought was an appropriate traffic plan, which was a detour by the use of Pleasant Bay Road to route, one th uh, route 39 to go around the construction zone. Um, I presented that for two reasons. One, because the sewer is plotted to go in the center of the road. And two, because you know, whenever you have an excavation, we obviously wanna keep the public as far away from our work zone as possible, right beside it. So th you know, the, the through traffic poses a hazard for our employees and for the people in the vehicles. Um, we had some meetings with the merchants and with the town and CDM Smith, and we <coughs> came to what we called the blended work approach. So as Joe pointed out, there's four very um, unique setups as far as depth and existing utilities that allowed us to kind of compartmentalize. I gave the town a couple different approaches that they could pick from so that you could have a little bit of latitude as far as selecting perhaps night work or some extended work hours. Um, well, I would say this isn't my preferred approach. Everything is workable to a point, right? So I guess I'd open it up to like to hear what the public and the merchants have to say, and then I can certainly follow it up with any questions the board has or the public has. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> and Mr. Chairman, if I just advise yeah. everybody yeah. that we have representatives here this evening from Weston and Sampson who participated. I believe I saw a representative from, yep, uh, Michael Judici from CDM, CDM okay. Smith, and of course, appropriate staff is here as well. Okay. So we've got everyone here that can uh, respond to questions and comments. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I know we have some, I see Paul, I see some of our merchants who any ones we should comment on. 
questions um, and concerns? Sure. I'm uh, Paul Fox. My wife and I own uh, Harwich Paint and Decorating and the, uh, I'll call it the Harwich Paint Plaza. Um, first of all, I know that this has all been, uh, you know, sort of a pain in the neck. Um, it's difficult and it's uh, inconvenient for both sides, both for um, Robert R., Abby and her team, and also though for the merchants and I think the public in, in general. Uh, my concern before construction even started was how the traffic flow was going to be handled and I was really thinking of hoping we could get a great um, a communication started between uh, the police who are running the details uh, you know, making sure that, uh, in my mind at that time anyway, the traffic was going to be flowing. I, I, I'll get to that more, but uh, I'm just making sure that the details were welcoming, uh, you know, encouraging, letting traffic know that, yes, we're open. Uh, should cars get backed up too far, you know, just maintaining a flow. Um, to tell you the truth, just really trying just to create a very open uh, instead of um, uh, an intimidating atmosphere. Uh, that's my thoughts prior to construction starting. Uh, when construction started, 137 and 39 were getting done simultaneously, I realized all bets are off. I have 30 employees um, that I'm responsible for. They are uh, year-round with me. Uh, in my plaza, I have Terry's Appliance, I have Alexis Pizza, I have Maja Studio. That's just me. However, there's a lot of other stores uh, in the East Harch area with, again, populated with many uh, employees that uh, we are all responsible for. Um, as, I, as I began to discover that, you know, it looks like there might be actually detours involved, uh, in my mind, uh, for all intents and purposes, a detour is my store is closed. Um, we're about to enter into a period now, this is our busiest time of year, we're about to enter a period where, at least for my business, and I think that's going to be pretty much for the others, uh, it's going to triple uh, each hour, each day, as we move along uh, going into uh, Memorial Day. Um, the idea of having a detour um, in my business alone, and I'm just speaking of my business, I'm going to be moving from approximately 400 transactions to over a thousand and uh, a day, a day. And I'm not speaking for Terry's appliance. I'm not speaking for Maja. I'm not speaking for Alexi's. All right. That's just my plaza. And I'm trying to figure out how a detour is going to accommodate that flow. All right. Um, I, I, I realize, again, that, you know, we're looking at it from two different ways. We have the business. We have the contractor. The contractor wants no vehicles. I get it. Obviously, the businesses want vehicles to maintain the business, to, uh, uh, again, take care of their employees, and we have a lot of customers that I hope are dependent on us. We were always there. You know, we didn't just pop up. We've always been there. So when this uh, task was being planned, um, you know, there had to be some type of a thought process, I would hope, going into an accommodation. Now, uh, I'm, I'm happy for what we have now. I think uh, Joe's done a great job. And at our meeting this past Monday with Abby, uh, you know, I, I was very happy with him expressing the fact that he was really going to be going to bat for us, the businesses. Um, you know, I, I, you know, at this point, I can't really ask for more than that. Uh, but uh, I would, you know, when it comes time to the detour, uh, vehicles being turned on to Pleasant Bay Road, I might as well send them to Truro because, you know, coming out on to 39, uh, I have a lot of great, fantastic customers, but I know loyalty only goes so far, and I respect that. Now, uh, again, if, if that's the way it has to be, uh, so be it. Um, I can't have everything. I realize that. I'm willing to compromise. I want this project. I think it's been a long time overdue, but at the same time, uh, I have responsibilities, and so do the other businesses in this immediate community. And this has been on my mind for years because I knew this would become an issue, and here we are, it's an issue. 
And if you said, Paul, on the calendar, mark me the three months that are going to be the worst, these would be them. Okay? And I get it. Nothing works out good. I know that uh, the intersection, Abby had mentioned uh, last week, that that was going to be a day of construction. Um, it's been a few days have gone by now. And in all honesty, that's the way this has been progressing. But I think that's the nature of construction, so I understand that. So again, as these decisions are being made, uh, I, I ask that you just keep that in mind. Um, I hope nothing gets rubber stamped, uh, that you know, even though the intent is to perhaps put up a detour, maybe when the actual time comes, uh, you know, there will be ways of actually creating a traffic flow. Okay? Uh, I have to thank Cindy Williams. I don't think she sleeps. Um, <laughs> she's been unbelievable in the meetings that I've asked to set up in the past. Um, she's really made sure that they happen. Um, I appreciate also Charlie Sumner. He's been really keeping me informed uh, from quite some time now. And as I said before, I would not want his job. And I also um, uh, appreciate Joe for the work that he's been doing and uh, looking out for the business in the area. Again, we've been there. We were there. We have, you know, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I would hope that, you know, in all fairness that this was taken into consideration uh, when these plans are made. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And that's our chore tonight to see how, see how we can make this work for, for everyone. Anyone else from the? Uh... Hi, uh, I'm Paul Niles, the director of the Lighthouse Charter School. Um, and I just want to give you um, a notion of the scale of traffic that, that we generate, uh, especially during two um, phases during the day. So uh, routine traffic for us is 40 to 45 staff vehicles in the lot at any one time, 75 to 100 family vehicles that deliver and then pick up kids at the end of the day, two large yellow school buses that come from Route 6 over to the school, one small special education bus, and then four or five RTA buses depending upon the day. And, um, you know, in addition to just the general less intense flow of vendors and uh, parents that come in during the, the course of a day. But that large traffic flow is confined to two different periods during the day. So in the morning, those um, 150 or so vehicles that come in are spread out between uh, 7 a.m. when I get there and about um, 8.30, with the heaviest between 8 and 8.30. But then in the afternoon, the traffic is more concentrated during pickup time. So the incoming flow of vehicles happens between uh, 2.30 and 2.55 or so when people come to pick up their kids. But then they all get dumped out between about 5 of 3 and 3.15. So then there's a flow of, you know, 100 to 130 uh, parent vehicles, the big buses, and then staff vehicles eventually exiting out. So um, whatever fine-tuning details of the plan, I think is gonna, um, would be well served to, to account for those two heavy times of flow, because we don't want some crazy backup where, um, where it's unsafe. Uh, Don? Thank Paul, you. I think we have a question for you. Oh, yeah. It's not, not so much a question as to add to his comments. Hi, Paul. Um, <coughs> in the afternoon, just to give a flavor for everybody, there's yeah. an alternative strategy that a number of students, at least a couple dozen of them, follow where they go from the school because that long line of uh, pickups to Dunkin' Donuts. And That's there's right. two different lots, and there's no internal curb cuts. Right. So. You're also talking uh, uh, probably about 20 to 24 cars that were picking up people at Dunkin' Donuts in addition to what you're talking about in the afternoon at the school itself. That's true, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Sean Morris. My family owns RPM Carpets. Um, so mixed in with his herd of families that come day to day in Paul's trucks and delivery trucks, we have quite a large collection of trucks that come pretty much on a daily basis in the 54 to 60 foot range. So when we start talking about 
the flow of traffic and detours, we have to take into consideration where those trucks can access uh, the, the rotary coming down 39. It, it's almost extremely difficult to get a 60 foot trailer or they just drive right ac straight across it. Um, if you take them down to Pleasant Bay to make that right hand turn, we already understand that that Pleasant Bay intersection is probably one of the most dangerous intersections in, in the entire town of Harwich. So we put up flashing stop signs and um, I would say that if that's gonna be a detour point, you may wanna put a, a officer down there to control that intersection or you're just looking for disaster there. Um, so I don't know what that is gonna look like when you start the detour exit 11 and where we're gonna push these trucks. But if I can't get trucks and materials in, I can't do business. I mean, at all. So I, I need some, I, I mean, to me, a night schedule obviously it is probably the most accommod, uh, accommodating schedule for us. Uh, we've got trucks, crews, we've got customers coming in from all directions. Uh, we, service, we service pretty much most of the lower Cape and about halfway up the Cape. So we get them from Brewster, Orleans, Dennis, Yarmouth, Chatham. Uh, so we got a lot of customer flow just like the, the town or Harwich Bank does um, and all the other businesses in, in this local area. But I think as you start to, especially down the middle of the road, if they're going to shut that whole road down, I have to understand how I'm going to get uh, logistically supplied. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask, can you, can, can I ask uh, a question? Yeah, we have a question for you. Um, did you participate in the, in the meetings that took place? I, I had not. My father has, and father he, is, he was in Florida, so okay. uh, I'm here representing. <laughs> right, right. But um, he, yes, but, he but was in some of the and, in, initial and planning meetings. So what is your reaction to what Joe has uh, discussed tonight? So, so I think that, you know, if you're going to, well, first of all, we have to have an alternate route that's going to be accommodating for that size vehicle mm -hmm. one way or another. Um, First and foremost, whether it, if it's detoured, uh, I'll do my best to work with my suppliers to make sure they understand what those routes look like. Um, I already I have a couple of my distributors that can s potentially downsize to a to a 28 foot truck for delivery versus a 60. So I'll work as much as I can to reduce that that issue. Um, but again because of the, the intense amount of traffic that we get and the size, if one in, in my, if you've seen my building, you can drive a truck around, you can come in one exit and go out the other exit. 60 foot truck cannot make the turn inside the parking lot if it has to go out the same exit it came in. It's, it's, it'll take down my light poles. They've already done it once. Mm -hmm. So they tried. <laughs> the, the last time they did construction on 137. Okay. So, I, I mean, again, to me, the night work, uh, listen, the, almost all of the businesses in East Harwich, given a, uh, given a few restaurants, is closed at 5 o'clock. And they don't reopen until 7 o'clock in the morning. So ultimately, <laughs> the, the night work, it, it would have been the preferred from the very beginning especially if it was going to be full full road closure. So, I, you know, I in that, I was not involved in that planning process. Um, I certainly would have been something that I would have recommended. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Julie. Hi, Larry. Hey. How are you? Good evening, Chair. Um, I'm going to speak in a couple of different capacities, one of which um, was uh, Julie Kavanaugh, sorry, uh, East Harwich, PSD, um, overall uh, former selectman involved in the discussions that we had at length about the project. And, and I was involved in the various meetings uh, for the board, sat in meetings when we talked about uh, planning for this construction, where we talked at length about making sure that we kept uh, at least one lane open, understanding that we would have to alternate. But we also talked about, um, you know, having night work whenever possible to reduce the impact to the businesses in the community, understanding that this is their livelihood, never mind the fact that those of us who live in East Harwich, you know, are trying to get around. But, but these are the people who are, you know, the bread and butter for the town, for their employees, et cetera. So I was a little... Um, 
disappointed to hear that we were going to have a situation where we're looking to close access on one entire part and and again I work in the construction business so I appreciate the difficulties and and there are always variables and I think everybody's been working super hard on trying to figure out the best alternative but I would remind the board that we did make a commitment to the community to try to do as much work in the evening as we could and it does seem to make the most sense we've got schools we've got businesses we've got restaurants and overall, if we can provide access to the restaurants in the evening, because in this intersection, the main intersection, you know, is freed up in the evening, <coughs> but not worrying about having these massive trailers have to go to the other gentleman's point about, you know, Pleasant Bay Road and 39. That's a horrific intersection. We have these large trucks taking these turns. I mean, we would have to have detail down there as well because that's just a disaster waiting to happen. So I just implore the board to look hard at this. I understand it's a budget issue as well, and trust me, you know, I, I'm, I feel for you on that because it's a, it's a hard project for everybody. And I remind everybody in the audience too that, you know, it's not just a, a case of us wanting to do the sewer that you know we're being sued and we have to move forward and smart for the town to do it and it's a benefit overall but in that regard I would ask you to look extremely hard at putting whatever monies and effort into doing evening work for the sake of everybody involved thank you <coughs> thank you Julie anyone else here to comment uh, Joe, is it uh, appropriate to ask uh, CDM Smith or, uh, or Abby to come back and talk about uh, some of the options? That I think it's uh, completely appropriate for us to now get into the options. Yep. Uh, and discuss what may be possible. You want? <laughs> Another example of CDM Smith and Robert B. Hour working side by side. <laughs> And I think it's, you know, obviously we have to concern ourselves with your work, but we can't put our businesses out of business. Just for the I, record, Mike Judas, CCDM. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I completely understand. Yeah. Okay, Robert Biara has struggled to toe the line between getting our job done and supporting our neighbors. So um, when we looked at the uh, four phases, knowing that sewer has to be completed from the low point to the high point, I am tied to certain intersections, if you will, um, knowing uh, I have to work in a, in a progressive manner. The deepest piece is from the pump station at Sherwood Drive to um, just past the church entrance, just past Round Cove. So um, with that being the last deep section, um, I don't see where possible I could get a vehicle safely past us. So um, that was the one area I think we looked at. We all agreed that there was feasibly, un unfortunately there's no other alternative through road. Um, when we talk about a road closure, it is not a hard closure. We still let residents and um, through, they just obviously can't go into the immediate zone. But we have been working uh, with the Lieutenant daily on the placement of officers, how many officers, the message the officer is to relay to the customer that approaches him, whether it's to a resident or a business. Uh, we've been trying to maintain that uh, flow <coughs> of information. So that would always continue through this piece. So um, Sherwood to Round Cove is the deepest piece. Um, there's no way to get a vehicle by when we're working during, uh, during any of the construction hours. Abby, you talked, is, is that a soft close or a hard close here when you say you can't get a vehicle by? You will not, uh, unfortunately, that it, like I said, that's the last deep piece. That's about 15 to 16 feet deep. Uh, unfortunately, the road is not wide enough to support a vehicle passing by the construction zone and be able to maintain what I am legally bound to maintain. Okay, Michael. Abby, how many feet is that roughly? And, and do you have a projection on days? Yeah. I did not. Barring any. Yeah. So that's the one thing, every, every time I've gave a hard date, <laughs> it's come on back, back on me pretty, pretty just bad. Enough, yeah. Just yeah. Right. So, so that, that portion of work is roughly about a month worth of work. Um, 
I am required, as I mentioned, I'm 15 feet deep, so the excavation itself is going to be in the 15 to 18 foot wide area. I am legally bound to maintain a, a two to three foot width on the either side of my excavation where, where it's like a no man zone. I can't get public travel by per OSHA regulations. So we're, and we're in the center of the road. So we're going to take up, for lack of a better term, shoulder to shoulder. Michael, let me ask you, uh, the center of the road, is that absolute? No, it's, uh, so we've adjusted the pipe alignment as we do on most streets based on existing conditions. If utilities are a little bit different than uh, was shown on uh, the, the information uh, provided by the utility companies. So we're not bound to stay in the middle of the road. The preference for sewer is to typically to be in the center of the road, but we have made adjustments on the portion of the system. And you can't adjust this section? Is that what you're saying? In, in this case, it's, it's, a, it's tighter. There are other restrictions there, Larry. There are curbs, uh, granite curbs on either side. There's a guardrail on one side for a portion of the stretch. There are telephone poles close to the road on the other side. And just because of the depth, um, I think we've all come to an agreement that it, it wouldn't be necessarily practical or safe to allow uh, traffic through that area. Um, the other option that we discussed that, you know, we were talking about implementing up in front of the businesses is night work. The issue there is that's a residential area. So now you're impacting residents uh, doing work from 9 p.m. to, to 6 a.m. So Michael. that would be another way to, to do that right. work. But, but then again, as I said, it's a residential area. Yeah, we were met with pretty great resistance on the other side when we tried to work it, and I mm -hmm. remember being here talking about going from four to seven, and that was an issue. From um, the first entrance to Sherwood Road to Partridge, and then from Partridge to Round Cove, that's probably a Partridge to Round Cove is about a third of the, I'd say two-thirds from Sher first entrance to Sherwood to Partridge. Can we do some light traffic down uh, Round Cove to Partridge and back out onto 137? after you make it to Partridge. We're not going to get a 60-foot box truck down there, but uh, we certainly would get a, a fair amount more traffic if we could divert down Partridge. Uh, we, we absolutely talked about that at the meeting. I think um, one of the things that they were being mindful of was it was a residential neighborhood. You can definitely get cars around us, but it wouldn't be <coughs> a high volume through traffic. It would be residents, you know, business um, customers trying to get around. Yeah, and I would just say down Pleasant Day Road to Round Cove on to Partridge and mm -hmm. out after you just go for that beyond section. Partridge, mm -hmm. just for that section. If, if it's going to take you a month, it, then maybe we'll save a week and a half of um, traffic being able to get in there easier. Mm -hmm. Just one thought, and, and you know, I, I've been for working later at night from the beginning. How much of the commercial stretch from um, where you're at now till you hit the residences? beyond the Lighthouse Charter School. How much of that can you do throughout the night? So, so uh, unfortunately, because we start at the low point um, where we are currently coming through the intersection, um, that portion of pipe would get installed um, from, we can use Austin Road as a detour, and then from Austin Road to uh, in between the Lighthouse Charter School and Town Paint. And fr once we finish on that piece, we have to go back, we have to go to Sherwood next. So that's why we laid out that plan. You know, it, it kind of <coughs> flops areas, but it's, it's the progression that I have to take. So zone one, zone two, and then zone three is Sherwood to Round Cove. Yes, thank you. Michael? Just another thought, and Abby's not going to like me saying this, just based on, you know, a comment that was made uh, by one of the merchants this evening that if we're coming up on, you know, the busiest season for those businesses, um, you know, there still is plenty of float in the schedule. Uh, I know Abby was trying to get this stretch of work done before, um, you know, the summer restriction is on after, this occurred after Memorial while we're Day. Talking that so at least for the stretch, the deep stretch where we need to do a detour, you know, maybe one option is to, to sort of put that off until the fall sometime or you know, the, the winter time next, next the end of this year, <laughs> November, December time frame, where maybe it's not as, won't be as impactful to the businesses if that stretch of the road is shut down. Get all the rest of this work done now uh, to the extent that we can, and then maybe leave 
that piece to a later time that's not going to be as impactful. Just, again, I, I gather you're. Abby's going to kick me under the table, yeah. but just well, based on the comment that, that was made tonight, that might be an option to think about as well. Yeah. That we hadn't discussed that before. So. We definitely hadn't discussed that. No, just. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so too. If we can't get the night work, then right. you know, that, is, that is an alternate. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to you have to use the microphone if you. But we want you to be sure. All right, I said I think that's a great idea. If we can't get to some concession to do a night work, then um, for whatever reasons, whether it's residents, wh whether it's, you know, one zone has to be done before the other zone, then delay into the off season certainly would help tremendously with the, with the local business it, during our busiest season of the year. Michael now, uh, Abby. Uh, well, I know that, that that work hasn't been done on the Robert B. Hour side. But <coughs> I would think that this board would at least delay and give Abby some time to figure out remobilization cost. I do think we have to have a number associated with that, or if it's even possible. Right. So before we act on it, I just want everybody to be mindful that the Robert B. Hour company currently has about 20 to 30 employees on the job working hard every day. Right. Most of them are Harwich residents. They, you know, they are working really hard to get the job done. So that would put a burden on us to stop now. And, and I hear what the merchants are saying, but if I'm just saying if, if I stop and I demobilize now and there would be a cost associated with that, I cannot do any of the neighborhood work either. <coughs> so you would be talking about possibly delaying the job for not one season, but two seasons, yeah. right? So just... I was given in the contract a limited amount of time to get Route 137 and Route 39 done. And those have to be done as the backbone of the job before I can move into any residential neighborhoods. So we've already done what we could outside of that backbone and it's now building off the center line. Uh, Michael? Just, just to clarify, what, I'm, what I just suggested is just that last deep section. I'm not saying shut down now and don't do any of the other work. I'm saying proceed up from Austin Road to as Tuckley much as you Hill can, and, and, and just leave that that deep section to another time. That that was my suggestion. No, I'm not suggesting they demobilize now and not do any of this work at this time. I mean, what's your reaction to, to, to that? You know, what, what he's proposing is that less than what you, Michael, was talking to you about, or is it? Well, initially I thought it was the, in, the entire No, stretch. I'm just saying that last zone, right. the deep section, the, you have to shut the road down. If you shut it down at a time that's not as busy, maybe that's Because, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we appreciate very much what you guys are doing, and, and, uh, but it's also a major economic impact for these businesses. I can't even imagine how much revenue it potentially could be. I mean, obviously everybody's going to adjust and try to do everything they can to keep the business is flowing in the way that they hope them to, mm -hmm. but um, if there's some compromise way to address it, and I know you've been working on it with Joe, but right. um, uh, if, if you can give us some sense of just doing that piece and whether that even makes any sense, Joe, I don't, I don't know. That, but, and, you know. And that may be a follow-up. Yeah. They can work yeah. it out with their, right. with their group. Right. group. Ed? Just Abby and Joe, uh, could, or Mike, Mike. Mike, if you could... Uh, uh, make comments on what the impacts and costs uh, of uh, doing night work is. I mean, there's got to be an impact in, in production because you're wandering around <coughs> in the dark. Uh, but we started initial discussions on that, Mr. McMahon, that that's still up for negotiation between Robert B. Hour and, and, and C.D.M. Smith and the town. Um, those costs have not been determined uh, at, at this point. But, but there's clearly a, there's a loss of production working at night because, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, Don, you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm afraid I'm not going to be capable of adding any uh, solution to this. But Julie was absolutely right. We made a promise, and it somehow never got followed through. I'm not, not blaming anybody at the table, but it's somehow or another it didn't get from this table to the office, to the contract, to you. Uh, I don't, I mean, unless we're going to be in people's court here and get everybody to shoot from the hip about what the uh, various advantages or disadvantages and monetary costs are like right here and now, it seems to me this is something that's going to take a, a bunch of people who actually have uh, skin in the game, like 
the, the hours particularly to get into an office with uh, some of the merchants and then come out with alternatives that aren't discrete for each, uh, each group, or, you know, something that's a point of agreement that we can live with this and this would cost, mm, and it would do the following. <coughs> we could live with this, but this would cost that and it would do the following. But <coughs> I don't see that we're gonna be able to get to a point of a vote tonight. Uh, no, no. That, that's not your intent, Don. Well, I know, but it's agenda that way. So, but we need to be able to take into account what Julie said because there's been an awful lot of stuff that we said that we were gonna do that hasn't happened the way we said it was gonna happen. And this is really the biggest uh, of all of them. Uh, I, I, know, I have a kid in the charter school. I shop all the time with Paul. Uh, I know the area, I mean, and I was waiting for a problem to happen because I couldn't see how uh, the, the newer developments uh, that Marsh had put up had those internal curb cuts and you could get you to Austin Road and get you around. But once you got to the discrete lots, if you couldn't use the road and have a passing lane, there's just simply no way because all the rest of these things are largely cul-de-sacs uh, in that area. They don't go to any place. But I feel like honor bound that we got to get people into a room and try to figure out what would be the least burdensome solution to this thing. Okay. Because we did promise that we were going to do something. Okay. Uh, just a comment on that, Don, is that uh, we have been getting people in the room and this discussion will continue with the uh, engineers and uh, Joe and Robert Al. It's getting to the point where it has out. to happen. Right, I just, and that's why I, I just want the board to be mindful that we, we are now through the intersection. Mm -hmm. We are a little ahead of schedule, and Austin Road is, is quickly approaching. So unfortunately, there is not a, time is not on our side at this point, um, to a certain extent. They, the crew that is installing that sewer main only has one way to go, and that is forward. So, uh, but it sounds like that may be workable with the so-called soft closes and uh, closes and things like that. Okay. Uh, let me get to um, uh, Joel and then uh, Michael and Steve. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to respond to where the board was going with the direction, and and try to tie it all together. But um, if you have access to your packets, if you look at the document. Uh, labeled CDM 2, um, those two items that are highlighted under section 1.4, which reads minimum requirements for traffic control and pedestrian access. Item B says, where possible, the contractor will allow for the maintenance of a minimum of one 11 foot lane of traffic for both directions. Parenthetical says, lane to be shared in the direction of travel to alternate in some situations under police officer control, close parentheses at all times. So that's the that's the reason why we're having these discussions in since February, uh, when was our meeting? Was it February 24th? Yes. Yeah. So when we had our monthly meeting, Abby had advised the group that the work is progressing, we're now getting to that area, and that they were seeking guidance as to, they did not feel in their professional opinion that it would not be possible for that stretch of roadway. So that's what brings us to this discussion this evening specifically and what really directed the discussions that we had in the intervening time. The other part that the board should be aware of is item D, which says no detour shall be allowed without prior approval of the engineer, which would be CDM Smith, and the owner, which would be the board or acting, um, the administrator acting through the board. And the reason why I bring those two up is Abby's absolutely right. We, we do need to have some conclusions. And what, I could, what I'd like to offer and I'll be looking to you folks because this is all off the top of my head, but in the spirit of the compromise that brought us to the table tonight, perhaps there's a compromise where the board can give some direction or decision on the first two zones. Um, and then that gives us more time for planning. Uh, we continue our discussions about the night work. Uh, and really that's just a sense from the board if there's an appetite for night work. You know, what I said to the group when it first was presented was, this <coughs> needs to go to the board, this is beyond my pay grade. And that's not me shirking my responsibilities, or I hope you don't take it that way. It was that it had a much broader impact on a broader community. So if, if possible, if we, while we may not come to conclusion on all the zones, uh, is it helpful for you folks that we make decisions or maybe narrow the discussion on zones one and two? Because they're literally coming up next, and 
it will give staff an opportunity to work on those costs. We have uh, Joe. I, we have a full house. Could you sure. uh, could you read for us again the construction zones one and two, so Certainly. everyone under, understands what. And the, um, so again, it would be this is what's considered option two overall, which means um, beyond what the contractor has asked. Um, and before I get that, I just want to finish this last thought of we do have a general sense of what night what night work would cost. I think it's inappropriate for me to reveal that tonight because we haven't had any discussion about length of time yeah, and everything else. So, so um, I know that we will be able to come to hard numbers very quickly and perhaps, uh, I don't mean to oversell guys, but perhaps come back to the board next week uh, on that part. But specifically, uh, construction zone number one, what's being uh, recommended is the work would progress through routes 137 and 39 intersection towards Austin Road. Um, if you want to, if somebody wants to make reference to the board, that might be helpful. And that's going on currently? No, that's that's oh, what's right. up next. So right now, they're, you're in the intersection. In the intersection. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. So what Abby's showing is the proposed Zone 1 work will progress through one, Route 137 and 39 towards Austin Road. The section of road would be closed to through traffic, but the area would be detoured from Austin Road to Route 39 around the immediate construction zone. So it is a detour, but I think we would all agree it's the smallest and most feasible detour we could do for that area. Uh, this work would take place during daytime work hours. Now, if I remember correctly, the reason why we're suggesting that work taking place during daytime work hours is because there's a very feasible, sensible detour approach using Austin Road and 39. Uh, we've absolutely all agreed that there is diminishment of functionality at night. There's no question about it. So we're not averse to doing night work. We want to maximize the work that can be done. And so that's the proposal for construction zone one, which would be the next uh, activity to happen once they're through the intersection. Then beyond that, construction zone number two, the work would progress up Route 137 from Austin Road to in between the Lighthouse Charter School and Town Paint Plaza. The work is proposed to be night work to start at 9 p.m. and again we determine that to be 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Thank you. Um, now the rest of this narrative, can you speak to that? Is that in addition to under zone two when you say the work could be performed with a partial detour? Is that night work and a partial detour or are you suggesting a separate option? All right, thank you. So I'll read that then. Because so let me, it's at night. Yeah, so if I, let me, if I can put it all together, because there's this paragraph in between that I'm, I'm going to avoid, correct, if you remember? Yep. Um, zone 2, work would progress up Route 137 from Austin Road to in between the Lighthouse Charter School and Town Paint Plaza. The work would be proposed to be night work to start 9 p.m. to 6, uh, 6 a.m. Uh, this would also be performed with a full detour since traffic flow is greatly decreased in the off hours. The detour would be Route 137, Pleasant Bay Road, Route 39. It would be preferred if this night work approach is adopted that a complete detour is selected for safety of the work crew. So what we're really talking about in that blended approach for construction zone two, and I'm gonna stop, take a breath, and look at everybody else to make sure I haven't misstated anything. Perfect, and we're back. Um, <laughs> that we're leveraging night work and detour, but that will help speed through it. Okay. Yep. Just um, on um, the construction in zone one and zone two, is there an order of magnitude uh, of length on these? Are we talking a, a month in each zone, or are we talking? No, we're two talking. Weeks? We're talking weeks. Okay. Again, um, because we're talking low lying right. with a rise. Okay. If I can call it, it's the easier exactly. work, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Michael, how do you answer my first question? Uh, being ahead of schedule. Yeah to see if we were behind schedule. Clearly this was all talked about with somebody yeah. before we started this. The, what's, the, what's the possibility of starting at the other end now while some of the businesses are still slow and doing that section first? Because I, I think if they had to, I, I don't know, let them speak for themselves, had an option now is slower than it's going to be April 1st. Mm -hmm. Uh, we actually can take a pause where we are now or, or hit Austin and then take a pause and go to the deep section. Um, we absolutely can do that.
bear in mind that would either have to be a full detour or again night work I'd let the businesses speak to that idea, but I, I, knowing that we are ultimately have to, having to get this done, yeah. if that would uh, lessen yeah. the impact, then it's worth considering. Uh, let me go with Steve next, yeah, and then I'll come back. No, I didn't. I didn't okay. I was just, um, okay. So you, 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 you say you need to start at the low area and, and low point and go to the high. Correct. So where's the low point? So low point Sherwood, where your pump station is going to go. Okay, so it's... Draining, okay. It's draining to Sherwood. Okay. So we start at the D okay. point and work, okay. work out. And, and, and then from the charter school toward 39. So there's two slopes, if you will. But from okay, so once you're beyond the charter school, school everything's going to Sherwood uh, okay. toward the low point. Yeah. <laughs> there's a pumping station there that'll pump up the hill. And just for that discussion, Mr. Chen, yeah. I want to make sure we're all in the same zone. Uh, what was just mentioned, if, if I heard Selectman McCaskill correctly, is starting at the oh. end. So the zones also tie into the original preferred preference of progress. Correct. Zone one would go first, zone two, then zone three. Correct. So we are talking about zone three, which is coming in from the other end and just past the Lutheran Church, Round Cove, Sherwood, and all that for the trench box. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So that's why, again, all parties agree that that area, um, it is not possible, as the contract says, to maintain the 11-foot travel lane. And so yeah. that's why there would be detours in place. Now, I would also add, just being a five-year resident here driving in that area, if there's night work, that's also a residential area. Okay. No um, judgments, just statements. Right. And, I, and I also want to say, no, no matter which direction is chosen, right. one of the other items we did talk about was extending the work time you know, for a couple hours each day, and that would help you move as swiftly through these areas as possible. And I, don't, you know? I think we don't have an option but to, but to try doing that to get going. I agree with Michael. Uh, you have another comment? I just had one question. So where, where you start work zone four in blue, so where does, where does that hit as far as Hall's path? Because I'm right, You're right. I'm yep. right there. You're right there. So, so does, it literally start and stop at Halls, or is it on the it, charter school side of Halls? It's right in between um, the Lighthouse Charter and Town Paints Plaza. It's it's for the you know right in their property line area. Okay, so it's so I'll be on, so I'll be impacted. Really, with Zone Four is going to be the crushing blow for me then. Oh, I wouldn't say a crushing <laughs> blow because we will never shut a business down. We will never close both your entrances at the same time. I think everybody can see what we did for the 400. We really worked hard to keep that plaza open and visible so yeah. that the customers, including my family, got there when yeah. we wanted to get there. Um, Fortunately, they have egress on two different right, routes. Right, so. you know, <laughs> on one zone is one of your entrances, and on the other zone is the other entrance. Well, if it's on the charter school line, both of them, I'm both in four. Because I'm, I'm north of the charter school uh, Harwich Paint line. So I, it looks to this, if I'm looking at this map, it looks like I'm all in zone four. And there is no, once that closes down, there is no way. So I got to figure out if, if I'm going to be all in zone four. And that's going to, once they start that piece of the puzzle, I you need to understand what that's going to do. But zone four, so the proposal for zone four is to maintain at one least line. a southbound, southbound lane. At least one. So they travel yeah. the highway. From the, all the way down? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I guess where we are is, let me ask you, uh, Michael made a suggestion. Uh, Paul or someone want to comment on the idea of trying to rephase that? Uh, yeah, I was thinking of that on the way over, and you know, it's it's funny. It's sort of like trying to pick my poison. Uh, <laughs> I th I thought that question would come up. Um, keep in mind what we're going with is each day goes forward uh, as we move closer towards May. Obviously, um, you know, there's going to be that many more people affected, um, and yet we still do. You know, we we are a year-round business. We still do enough. Uh, I I guess. Uh, 
not having gone through this before, if I had a crystal ball, I would say, yeah, it would make sense to cut back uh, on the impact that's going to affect the greatest amount of vehicle traffic. So I'm, I'm okay with that switchover. Uh, you know, I may regret that for saying that, <laughs> but that's, that's the way it is. In my mind, I'm just thinking, and this is just totally as a resident, um, <coughs> that's going to be very interesting as cars get, you know, uh, detoured, uh, you know, during the day from what was originally proposed as, uh, what would that have been, zone two, I guess, originally, uh, from what I was told going up to uh, Round Cove. Um, I, had, I had teasingly made the comment, you're going to have vehicles backed up onto Route 6. Um, as you get closer towards May and Memorial Day, certainly. So I'm sensitive to that. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm good with, you know, if we want to switch that around uh, in that case and take that time frame from there and move it closer towards, towards us. Let me go back to the, uh, to Jill's, your, uh, uh, and Michael, your, uh, I guess, obvious comment. If we, if we focus uh, tonight on zones one and two, and then uh, look at, I know it's not your favorite option, but uh, delaying that last part, not the whole stretch, but the last part until next uh, fall to uh, get past the summer traffic. Could you come back and look at that to see what that would mean? And because we also need to come back and look what the cost implication is of a uh, of lights anyway. And that might give us a direction in going on one and two that seem to be workable and then come back and look at can we can we make that detour as short as we can and then off, even though I understand the mobilization aspect, but I'd like to look at that myself and maybe come in okay. agreement on it. I, I can certainly do that. Okay. Chief Gilmet or uh, Lieutenant uh, Sullivan, do you want to just comment on the details of how you feel that's going? And can we, can we do more, or should we do more? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, John, you are to hide. <laughs> <laughs> because I think we are. I know you understand this too. We want to be as friendly as we can. Yes, uh, Mr. Chief, the Gilmette Chief of Police. Um, I just want to uh, commend Lieutenant Sullivan for the work he's done on this. This has been a practically fully time-consuming issue for him, and uh, he's been uh, doing an outstanding job. So I will defer to him. We had a, a big meeting on it this morning. I will defer to him on how he feels the details are going, and then I'll remind him as we go if there's any positive we can add. <laughs> um, well, the details are going, going great. We have excellent communication with CDM Smith and both vendors, IJV and Robert Auer. Um, anything they give me, I have been able to make work. So whatever, whatever we choose, the police department will, will work with both sides, both groups, and make it work. Um, I don't know exactly what you mean by deep. Like, are you talking specifically for each zone, or are you just wanting to update on the detail? Just a detail. Um, well, well like my, my concern is, is, if, is the first comment that Paul made to be sure that we are welcoming and friendly and giving people good directions. To, and then did they understand up front how they could get this, the businesses? Yes. Um, when I you know, That communication aspect is what I'm interested in. Yes. What I do also when I um, do the sewer details specifically, I send an email out to our police email to everyone who has the detail. Um, I list the detail officers that are working. I list any maps, including Chatham's. I'm in direct contact with Deputy Chief Anderson because Chatham's construction is also impacting greatly on us with detours. So the officers have can look at their phones and have whatever information they really they need. And I update it if there's any major changes in it. Um, the guys are trying. It's 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 usually we try to keep all the local officers working it because there is directions involved and there's residents, buses. Yeah you know, the whole gambit. So we like to have the regular officers there because they know where everybody's going. Um, I mean, uh, I think. Oh, yes, we do. It's funny, I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I get, <laughs> I, my, my phone rings off the hook with questions. I won't call them complaints. Yeah. I'll call them questions about it. But I am very impressed. I've had people pull me aside, whether in the station talking about something else that I deal with, or out in the street, I'm also a resident, and I live out in East Houch, and I've gotten nothing but, but good, 
positive feedback from my detail officers. So I actually, it actually has been actually very reaffirming for me that I have not had any specific um, complaints <laughs> that, uh, that, you know, anyone treating their motorists rude or, uh, or anything like that. Like the guys are really, the guys are really trying. I mean, it, it, is, it is difficult at times and they're, they're doing the best they can and honestly, it's a very good job. Thank you, Tom. Oh. Hey, uh, Don. Yeah, I, I hope this isn't off point, but it's something that relates to this overall uh, process. I was just thinking about what Paul was saying. Uh, the advent of the increased business is in part because the snowbirds are coming back, and then there's going to be added to the mix people who aren't even as familiar as the snowbirds with the area. Uh, one thing I've noticed is, and somebody's going to get mad at me, I'm not sure whether it's a DPW or you guys. Uh, the signs have got to be more specific. Oh, yeah. I mean, if there was only something that said no access to Route 6 on this route, like I live right by the roundabout, I can't tell you. I mean, I, I'm fairly conversant with the area after 30 years. It, even I have no idea of how far can I get to this. I wouldn't even want to be close to being a partner with the guy who's got the, uh, the country store. I mean, because for all intents and purposes, I get that you've got people that are, you know, assisting with the detours, but if every car stopped and said, can I do the following, you'd never have any flow of traffic anymore, especially as it increases. If the signs were more illustrative of what you can and can't do, it would be real helpful. Because uh, I, I thought at one point I could uh, game the system and go through the 400 East and then go across the stoppage shop. There was a period of time where that was not possible. And there was no way to know by the signs whether it was or wasn't possible until you got there and glad that we go early to school, uh, until you got there and found that you had to double back. And then at one point I was going to exit 10 to go down to exit 11 and drop down from the north. Uh, if the signs were better, that would be helpful too. We can absolutely look at the signs. Yeah. Yeah, Michael. Joe, could you just uh, repeat what, what two phases or what do you want us to approve tonight? I think. The contract is crystal clear on what they need to go look at and come back. But to move this along, well, what I action would you like us to take yeah. tonight so that they at least leave with I an idea of what they can and cannot do? So I would say that if there's uh, if there's no appetite to get into all four zones tonight, yeah, that we can that. certainly focus on <coughs> zones one and two, or if I may, or separately zone three, as you've talked about. Either we can get through the intersection and through the business community or we can do the deep end with the greatest impact to traffic. I, it's the preference of the board, but I'd be okay with moving zones one and two with the understanding that they're gonna come back within a week with the at least exploring the idea of zone three first and, and also looking at postponing. Yeah. But yeah. just to give you an idea of yeah. something, right. and I'm okay with zones one and two to start. And that's where I was going, Michael, on this was trying to move on one and two, but come back with uh, more information on the cost of the lighting, the uh, uh, possible delaying uh, that small portion until next fall to help us go forward. And that would also approve the night work. For the and that would approve the night work. And I would also uh, suggest that we approve some extended hours if necessary to keep the project going. Okay. Because let's face it, that makes it more less comfortable for some people, but it's quicker. So it's a trade-off. Mr. Chair, do we have time to do for a week? for this to, to, to make the night work happen. The reason I say that is there's nothing on here to suggest uh, explicitly that we might take an action to, uh, to start doing night work and I suspect if we had some sort of public hearing that we said the purpose of it was to do night work that we'd get a different mix of people sitting I, out here. I had the impression that uh, zone one did not include uh, night work. Yeah. Zone two, all does. zone two does. Zone, zone two does. So if we start on zone one, that gives us, uh, would that give us a week? Is that? And it is advertised in under zone two to do the night work. So I think right. we're covered on opening that. Ed? Yeah, if, you, if you do zone one, you're going to be there for a week or two weeks? Uh, zone one is a very small area. Okay. It is, it's really from just outside the intersection to Austin Road. So that, that is maybe through three days. It's not a, yeah. That's a very small area. When would you start that? Um, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow? Thursday. Thursday? Yeah. So, I mean, it's very, it's. Okay. 
So if we approve zones one and two, zone two improves night work. So yeah. zone two would be night work, and would that be would be work. from Austin to the, you know, in between Town Paint and the charter school, so it's, right. it's not the residential zone. Okay. Which, which is fine, just to, to clarify, and just the caveat there, if there's an appetite for, again, taking zone three now, for lack of a better word, they would be in the middle of the night work, and then you'd need to stop the night work and jump to there, if, if that's, that's, well, what that was it. that's what we'd like you to come back with yeah. after yeah. you have that that's conversation. So okay. so it says it it so you may add uh, those uh, microphone for us, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I understand. So the public did the same. I came into that. I not in. Yeah, Mr. Chair, this is not in the packet or in, on the agenda. It came supplementally through our email. It's the public did not know that we were going to vote on night work. Okay. Okay, um, so so when you start the night work, instead of it starting at nine, could it be, you know, can it be starting at seven instead of at nine, and that way the night work might go quicker, and then you would skip after the night work. Would you start at St. Peter's, and so? So y the night work would go from the charter school to what? Austin. 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 Austin? Yeah. Okay. So then, then the next section, instead of, can you skip the next section, or does the next section start from Austin through Pleasant Bay Road, or Pleasant Road? Zone one and zone one is from the intersection to Austin Road. Okay. Zone two is Austin Road to the Lighthouse Charter Town Paint Line. And, and then zone three is Sherwood to uh, church. the church. To the church. Correct. So the middle is, is yeah, the last yeah. two. You kind of connect the dots as you go. And, and just so you get the understanding from Sherwood? The, in front of Town Paint is going to flow down towards the intersection of 39 and 37. From Town Paint to Sherwood is going to flow that way and from Pleasant Bay right. to the pump station there. Okay. So, all right. So, yeah, but like the, the um, businesses, we do not want any of that traffic being stopped because we want to be able to get through the businesses during the summer months. And so, you know, if they have to stop the project anywhere along the line after, what, May 15th, can they do that? Well, that was part of our discussion of what we could do to shorten that. That's what we were, that was the information we are asking to come back to. Okay. So they could stop in the middle. So they're going to look at, at stopping in the middle if they have to, and then continuing it in the fall. At at one end, yes. Okay. Where they had the detour. All right. Michael, Abby, if we vote tonight to to uh, do zone one and zone two without the night work until next week, so we can advertise it, that does that screw you up? I would have to have an absolute vote. On, on Monday night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that you'll get you have work to do between now. I have and I have work to do between this Monday Thursday and, and Tuesday. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like. But if we can get it done by. But it would have to be. I don't want to delay. I hear what Don's yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. But with daylight savings, you've got to. Why can't you increase the hours at the end of each day? So that that was one of the the options that was presented. It was an additional, you know, roughly 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. You know, we we could that do makes that. Sense. And I like that suggestion. Start at seven. So the standard hours in the contract are 4 p.m. The town hasn't hesitated extending right. upwards to seven. Right. It'll be light. Right. Lighter as yeah. you go along. So, in, in uh, what we have on the agenda tonight is discussion and possible vote to affirm the wastewater phase two contract number one traffic control plan for routes 39 and 137. Um, uh, part of that, the proposed traffic control plan, I is night work, um, as it's been presented uh, here. 
Um, is there any requirement that we have a separate hearing to approve night work? It's nowhere there in the packet anywhere that we're well, going to do that. But, but does it need to be? I, mean, I would vote for one but not the other. This is in the packet, right? No, it's a, it was an attachment in our Dropbox. So yeah. there was, a, again, there was a distribution to a specified audience on Sunday and a direction to staff to get it onto the website as soon as possible. Then we have an updated I, packet. I can't it. speak to whether or not it was on the update, but that was it, the It was intent. in the updated packet because I'm looking at it Correct. now. And, and again, just so the board knows, working through um, Weston and Sampson and other folks, we uh, obviously had meetings with the merchants, but we were trying to reach out. We reached out to the school. <coughs> we reached out to the church, and that was the purpose and intent of my announcement last week is, if nothing else, to advise the general public that we're talking about that area. Um, and so I, I could not make a reference to night hours because the, the language that you see in the uh, agenda had to be confirmed by noontime on Thursday, and we were still working it out. And I didn't have uh, an opportunity to get to the packet itself until I had all the materials, which were after the Saturday budget uh, meeting. Ed, and Michael. Ed. But is there any requirement that approving night hours be a separate approval process? Uh, yeah. I don't Michael. believe there is. Michael? Ed, I would say there's no requirement, but okay. we're met with great opposition on the other side of the road by the homeowners, and it, it yeah. was brought before us. So I'm going to move that we approve um, Zone 1 and Zone 2 work, Zone 2 work, uh, to have work hours extended to 7 p.m. Is that acceptable? Uh, that's, that's, yeah. that's my motion, and then I would ask that we bring it back next week and approve night work. Second. And that, and that gets you going in a way. Keeps us moving. Keeps yes. you moving. Yes. It, 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 we certainly don't want to stop this at this point. And will you, at next week, will you also come back to us with some of the other items we talked about? Yes. For potential. Uh, right. Delay and Joel, that would, I assume would be part of your discussion. You and Griffin and Dan, and yes, yep. everyone have, uh, and come back to us on that. Sure. Yeah. Specifically, I'd be um, delaying that one portion until yes. the fall, yeah. as well as just plain starting at the other end and getting the other end done with as least impact to the businesses now as we can, and then coming back and doing the night work on the other end after the fact. Okay. Yeah. That's what, we, uh, talked, that's, that's what we had talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, it was motion. Uh, yeah, it was motion. Was we have a motion. Right. I would take a vote. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass. Appreciate it all. Appreciate everyone showing up to uh, help this discussion. Mr. Chairman, if the board's willing, yeah. can we take a brief recess? A brief recess? Yeah. Okay, sure.
need the time of this. Uh, we got, I'm going to move ahead. And uh, we're moving next to the Harbor Management Plan. Uh, John, why don't I let you take the lead on this? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, John Rendon, Harbor Master. Um, I'd like to just propose uh, a, a uh, really a minor change to the Harbor Management Plan. Um, as stated in my memo, I'd like to add uh, one Class C unattached permit. Uh, we currently, in the Harbor Management Plan, uh, we define how many of each <coughs> permits are allowed to be issued at the harbor, um, and that is dictated by the Board of Selectmen. Um, in this particular category, the Class C unattached, we have two authorized, I'm just requesting to add a third. And the permit a allows a boat owner with a current uh, Coast Guard license, we call six pack license or greater, to carry up to six passengers for hire utilizing town facilities. And so what the permit really allows is a boater who is properly licensed. It's an offloading permit issued uh, by myself um, from a wait list specific to this permit, and it allows them to utilize town facilities to run their business, meaning they can go up to our bulkhead, they can take fuel on from a, a, a tank truck, they can offload catch, they can offload passengers at our uh, town facilities. Um, I made this proposal in front of the uh, uh, Waterways Committee and they fully support adding one. Um, what's, the, what's the downsize, uh, downside of it? Um, in my mind, it's very little. You know, we try to manage our offloading areas. Um, that's where our commercial fleet uh, offloads their catch, takes on fuel, that's where our current charter boat captains um, do the same. Our uh, passenger boats really, they, they take on fuel there, but uh, they offload their passengers at their slip because we have the handicap accessible ramp system now. So I think it's a minimal impact. The other consideration is parking. We're really talking one permit, one boat that may or may not have a slip in Sacquatucket. Um, this permit is open to any boat that has uh, dockage or mooring within Harwich. It, it, and it doesn't have to necessarily be somebody with a town mooring or town slip. It could be somebody at a commercial marina, um, uh, a, a, a uh, yacht club. But it's an offloading permit that they've waited for on our wait list that allows them to use town facilities to help them run their business. So I think it's minimal impact on our facilities, both from a parking standpoint and a offloading site standpoint. Thank you, John. Michael? I move that we approve the change to the harbor <coughs> management plan by adding, by the adding of a Class C unattached permit, as recommended. Second. Second. Any further discussion? John? Yeah, I'm just curious. <coughs> uh, what meeting of waterways did they vote uh, to support this? Uh, the last uh, the last month's waterways meeting. Okay, so that's why I don't have minutes for it. But I, I, I mean, personally, I don't know a heck of a lot about water, I don't, uh, waterways, and I don't know a heck, a heck of a lot about golf, and I kind of rely on the committees we appoint to give us guidance on those. And in gen the last time they changed something, it was the same deal. Is there any way that we can get these things so that... Uh, they have approved minutes so they could be attached to the packet and we're actually reacting to a recommendation. No, no I'll talk to the chairman. Yes, sir. Try to make that happen. Just a quick comment on that as a liaison to that board. Um, and, we, and I did have a conversation. They did vote it unanimously. Um, I agree with you. We should get minutes. But this just happened at their last minute, last meeting. And uh, he's unable to, bring the, uh, unable to do the minutes yet. Any other discussion? Anyone in the audience? Ed? And, and at best, they would have just been draft minutes because we're not going to meet again until May 20. That's a vote. They would have put their recommendation off an, an additional month. Well, right, they'll be bringing right. those minutes for approval at next week's meeting. Okay. 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 Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Abstention. Aye. And one ab abstention. Thanks very much. Thank you, John. 
Uh, going on then to uh, new business, uh, Joe, I'm going to uh, turn this, uh, these items. So, Mr. Excuse Chairman, me, I have to apologize. I don't have any information on this request other than what is presented in the packet. Uh, Dan, do you? Yes. Uh, good evening. Dan Pelletier, Water Wastewater Superintendent. Um, I had requested this be put on uh, the agenda today on behalf of the residents of uh, 150 Church and Sparrowhawk Road. Um, I was called out to their property to take a look at um, or give them guidance in how to connect to the upcoming sewer system. Um, so after reviewing the property and getting a full scope of what is actually out there, um, the current situation is that there is 150 Church Street and 8 Sparrowhawk Road, which are both accessed through one entry point off of Church Street. And there is also a third buildable lot um, in the back of the property as well that I believe they have intentions of developing for another family member. Um, so in looking at this, I had run the calculations to see, you know, if they could get there by gravity from their homes to the street and what options they may have to get there. Um, so after going through that exercise, I was able to determine that in order for 150 Church Street specifically in this instance to get to the street on gravity on their own property, they would have to bring in fill and raise the entire grade. Additionally, they would also have to sleeve either the <coughs> sewer service and or the water service. Um, the property on 8 Sparrowhawk Road could also get there by gravity. However, they would also have to sleeve the sewer service and or water service and the same would be true for that third um, lot. Now, it's been the town's position that typically we only allow one sewer service per parcel and there's no deviation from that. Um, where this is two or really three parcels in the back and it is a paper street, I thought it would be more efficient for the town as well as the residents if we installed one eight inch sewer service or lateral that they would be able to put a manhole and run a private sewer line to the end of their property and all three homes would then be able to connect through gravity at the end of the um, paper street. They would have to do that through um, 150 Church Street would have to obtain an easement through 8 Sparrowhawk Roads property to connect in via gravity. Um, but the homeowners have indicated that that wouldn't be a problem and that you know we could work together to make sure that the easement is adequate for the town as well as the residents. So I'm really here to, to um, ask on behalf of the residents that the, that the board make this accommodation for um, this property. So I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, Dan, I have, have one. These are three separate properties at the moment. They are three separate properties. However, there is a private road that is recorded. It would appear if you drove by it as a driveway, but it is in fact a private and road. So They'll add these to their uh, titles and so on. So there's some. That would be in case one of the property owners decides they don't like the other two. There's one. They're related to both. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to Thanksgiving in my house then. So. <laughs> well, that's a good point. But but you would handle in terms of. Uh, Title uh, documents and so yeah, on. Yeah, and we so. in in the water department, we'd, we'd go through this exercise. I'm not going to say regularly, but often enough. And uh, typically, when a property requires an easement through another for water service, um, that that is vetted by the department prior to recording, and we verify that it is recorded prior to, to you know installing the water service. So I would plan to do the same thing in this situation. Uh, Michael, just my only question. So you know, on one eight inch main down that road down the easement. The town's obligation would only be to one eight inch stub onto the property, just like we do with all the other laterals. And then the yeah. residents would pick up from there and run to the end. Yes. Okay, and then from each home, a pipe will come out into that eight inch. Would come out into a manhole that's placed at the end of the paper street. Each, and they each home would come into that yeah. manhole. And then how or it would be an engineered, they would, so I might've skipped a step, I apologize. Prior to any of the construction actually taking place on the property or the residents picking up from that lateral, they would have an engineered plan put together and prepared and submitted to the town as to how they anticipate bringing it down the road and what the connections would look like. Okay. 
by family. Last question. Based on water flows, um, O and M cost water flows. Each house would have their own water meter. Yes, they their two properties currently are on town water. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Do we have to do a change to the uh, comprehensive wastewater management plan? No, or not on this. This is strictly. And uh, uh, I okay. don't want to lose leave anything out too. I did discuss this with um, Mike and CDM, and it appears that we would be able to accommodate this change with little or no cost. Right now, we still have to review the alignment. We may be able to shift a manhole and, and capture that, or it may be something we have to put another manhole in, but it would be a, a reduced cost. And by doing this, we're put putting one eight-inch service instead of two or three sewer services, so the costs would. Uh, Michael, follow up. Last question, th then, um, so this is all done at their expense. They're gonna have a plan made. Who approves the plan? That would come to the town for review. The town, who, the Board of Health, you? It's going to be. Uh, administrator, us? It's likely will be me and Megan reviewing these when they come in. Okay. It's however that process formalizes um, between the decommissioning of the Title V systems. That application process is going to be done through the Board of Health. Um, Megan has indicated that it's they intend to do one application for decommissioning of the sewer se the septic system and installation of the sewer service, um, so it would follow the same it protocol. Makes sense to me as long as it's legal with yeah. the town. I, I hate to see them go through a whole bunch of work and then get, have them get hung up someplace else in town. But uh, Ed? So, so the town will install the 8-inch stub on the line in Church Street to the edge of the right-of-way at the beginning of the private road? Yes. And there's currently two water services, and that's another thing with you know this this property specifically is that there's two water services one meter pit a water service and then there would be two or and then a third future water service and sewer service running down you know a 10 foot gravel road which is kind of tight asking for problems down the road <laughs> any other questions anyone from the audience i don't think you guys uh, except a, a motion no. Is it appropriate to make a motion on this, Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay. I move that we approve the request. Find the line item again. <laughs> uh, relative to Sparrowhawk Road sewer improvements as presented. Second. Second. Any more discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And now don't go home and fight about this. <laughs> <laughs> Next on new business is a cultural center room rental agreement. Uh, Joe? So, Mr. Chairman, I would defer to our cultural center director to just walk you through um, what's being proposed. However, because there are fees, uh, the board is uh, required to weigh in on that. Carolyn, if you want to add anything, please feel free. Uh, thank you very much. So, we realized as we were um, putting the contract together that we do not have any place in it where we can um, charge a late fee for any renters who are late. Certainly, if you're a day late, that's not what we're looking to do. But there are some renters that um, have been habitually late, and um, much like the harbor does or your water bill, uh, the town should collect that revenue because it does take manpower for us to keep trying to collect the rent from people. So that's the area that we changed. Um, in addition to that, the only other sentence that we changed um, was that we asked that we um, have renters who will be occupying within 30 days of signing the rental agreement, and they must main con remain continuous to the studio throughout the term of their lease. So we don't want people who are just coming here for the summer and then going to be gone. Uh, we do have a wait list, so we're trying to make it as active as possible. And one of the things that we always say is this helps our economic development. Well, if no one's in there, it's not helping the town's economic development. Okay. And so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I've met Joe. with Carolyn, and I agree with everything she's recommending. And I think uh, I recommend to the board that you take their action as requested. Okay. Uh, Ed? Mr. Chair, I'd move that we approve the Cultural Center Room Rental Agreement update and the imposition of a late fee charge. Second. Second. Uh, Michael, do you have a question in addition to that? Or? No, I, I mean, I would just say, I, I think, Ed, you might want to limit the uh, motion to uh, rental agreement update because there was another update in there yeah. un, un, uh, related to the yeah. 
the charge. So if you just ended your motion at uh, agreement update. Sure. Okay. Sure. Do we have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Anyone from the audience? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, next is the season of alcohol license for uh, 30 year old world, uh, Joe. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, you'll see the next three items. Um, the town would have received the uh, renewal information for seasonal liquor licenses of all manner. And so, staff has begun the process, and you're starting to see the renewals come in for approval by the board. I would recommend that uh, the three items coming up on items C, D, and E be approved by the board. Uh, and these have all been checked by staff. Correct. So, Michael? I move that we approve seasonal all alcoholic license for 30 Earl Road, LLC, DBA, the Commodore Inn, 30 Earl Road. Uh, approve seasonal all alcohol license for Mount Group, LLC, DBA, Mad Minnow Bar and Kitchen, 554 Route 28. And approve seasonal all alcohol liquor license, 10 yen, LLC, DBA, 10 yen, 554 Route 28. Second. Okay, so move and second. Any more discussion? Are there any existing uh, restrictions on the licenses? Uh, Joe, we'll look at that, but I think I these- would add, I would add to include any uh, restrictions that are on the licenses. I, it's a good question, because I assume we follow our uh, normal hours that we've uh, talked about before. As long as that's there, I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So no. with that contingency, we'll, uh, we'll no, move ahead. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next are uh, contracts. Joe, first contract for Chapter uh, 90. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Board. Uh, on the next item, I would defer to our uh, DPW Director to update you on the Chapter 90 project request for a lower county road. Good evening, Link Cooper, DPW Director. You have before you this evening a request to approve a contract in the amount of $409,506 to perform chip sealing, crack sealing, um, and, I'm sorry, and patching on Lower County Road. This is consistent with the plan that you voted last July, I believe, um, that was presented to you. Um, we did have a delay in that we had intended to bid the patching contract out to see if there was some economies of scale we included this road in our county bid project, in our county bid list, and we feel that we got a pretty good value um, because of the amount of patching of this. Um, and this is exactly following through. We had ho we had hoped to do that patching uh, last fall. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. And the timing now will be soon. As soon as we can get it approved by you and the state, we're going to pull the trigger. Uh, Michael, and then, uh, excuse me, I'm looking, I'm looking at you ahead and say Michael. But Michael, go yeah, ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the Chapter 90 project request for Lower County Road for chip sealing, uh, patching, and crack sealing. Crack sealing in the amount of $409,506. The seven eight six. Second. Michael? Who's doing the work, Link? Uh, there's three different contractors. It's all under our county bid items. Okay. Who is it? Uh, all states has the patching. I believe I, I'm strike that. All states has the chip seal. I believe Lynch has the patching contract, and I don't know what the crack seal is. There's, there's two or three different vendors. Can you get that to me, please? Yep. And then the um, who determines who gets that? They bid through the county. Is that how that works? Yeah. This is a collect. This is all of our road work. Oh, yeah. Everything except for our drainage contract, in which you guys, I mean, which we brought to you, is collectively bid with a bunch of towns via Bonstable County Purchasing Department. So there's economies of scale with all the towns gathering together to bid those items. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You're, Thank you're you. still on, I think. Right? So, Mr. Chairman, the next item that the director will speak to is the second of. As you may recall, two agreements regarding solid waste disposal. Uh, the first one that uh, the board dispatched, I believe, was uh, late January for Covanta. Um, as expected, this is the second agreement relative to New Bedford solid uh, waste, excuse me, New Bedford Waste Services. 
Uh, it's been reviewed by uh, Mr. Lawton for procurement. It's been approved by the finance director accountant as to funding. And now the board's just being asked to, uh, to agree and to sign. But for Thank details, you. I'll defer Thank to the director. You. Add to that or subtract uh, it? That was a pretty good summation. Um, I will say I presented this plan to the board uh, this past December, and this is the last piece of that, uh, that presentation, to have two contracts so we don't have all our eggs in one basket. And these contracts run to the end of the, the fiscal year, to the calendar year? These are calendar year contracts, and they are each good for three years. I'd like to point out that uh, this, this particular contract is the exact same contract you signed with CMAS, just the names and players changed. Same format. Okay. Uh, Ed? Mr. Chair, I'd move that we approve uh, signing the contract with New, Web New Bedford Waste Services for a solid waste disposal agreement. Is there a second? In accordance with what's attached to the packet. And we have a second. Do you second it? Any other discussion? And the, and the prices were the same between the two contracts, is that right? No, no, sir. There's a couple of dollars di I, different? I, it, it is a little. This was straight up uh, beginning price with a 2.5% inflation rider. CMAS or Cavanta started at 90. And I don't know the number. It's like 94 and change and ending at like 98. These prices start at 93.75, 96.09, and 98.50. So the blended rate's about the same. Okay. And you, just in terms of buying, how, how you work that? Is like half goals one place and half goals the other, or it just depends on who's around? Or <coughs> uh, given the heartache and um, problems we had with solid waste beginning last May, it became evident that we needed more than one outlet because when one goes down. So what um, New Bedford Waste is doing is they're not making the, uh, the briquettes like they originally proposed a couple years ago. Um, they are actually bagging waste and shipping it out of state, as is uh, uh, Harvey, E.L. Harvey is another player that's doing that same thing. Le less than ideal, but this gives us two avenues to dispose of our municipal solid waste. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Any, uh, any other questions in the audience? We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this next item I am very pleased to present to you folks uh, and, however, can take no um, credit whatsoever in this coming before you. Uh, this was through the good efforts of the folks at the uh, Brooks Academy Muse Museum and um, Historical Society as well as uh, Bob Lawton. Uh, this is their uh, building use license agreement. Uh, it's been in play for about a year and a half now. Uh, been fully vetted by all parties, including legal. Uh, as you can see, the Historical Society has uh, signed off, and now the board's being asked to endorse this. Uh, this is critical to have in place as the town continues working on the uh, Brooks Academy uh, engineering study and uh, structural work that will take place uh, hopefully within the next few months. But the board is being asked to... Um, to uh, codify and agree to this agreement. Uh, again, our other party has already done so. Uh, Michael? I move that we approve the Brooks Academy Museum agreement as presented. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Any comments from the? No, really. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you give everybody a I title. Take, Everyone's I, a co-president. <laughs> okay, I, I take order as well. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I wasn't messing with her. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just wanted to note that the, in the end of the agreement there was spaces for the Board of Selectmen to sign and it was signed by the Historical Society. Like all presidents. Uh, Harwich Historical Society and it, there's three presidents, so shouldn't they be tri-presidents? <laughs> sort of tri-wizards? <laughs> no. Well, it's a temporary position. Okay. <laughs> And so the board does have that in your signature packet, so once that's executed, we can get copies out there. We can everybody. sign it out and give it to them. On yep. the, uh, Thank you. Moving on to old business, uh, Dan and uh, Griffin. Let me just uh, preface this a bit as, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, joining the regional agreement with uh, Dennis and uh, Simon. And uh, we've had uh, a lot of discussion 
uh, driven by Joe and Dan and Griffin about what makes most sense to, uh, in terms of what area that we can make the DHY. And both from a, uh, uh, what we're trying to do is phase this out, maybe make it a little more comfortable for us, what makes most sense for the town. One other statement is, is that even though we've had a lot of discussion, this, we hasn't, hasn't, this hasn't had a wide discussion around town. So this is a first discussion, and then we'll come back on it probably several times. Uh, whoever wants to start, Joe? So, Mr. Chairman, before you get into that, but related, I just want to uh, update the board. Uh, Selectman Howell and I met uh, this afternoon with uh, several counterparts from Dennis and Yarmouth and um, really getting into the, the details of the proposed partnership operating agreement, which, of course, is scheduled to be um, uh, an article before the, the May 4th town meeting for, for approval by the three towns. Uh, should that approval occur, the partnership then is in place and then a whole cascading series of events occur, uh, not the least of which is that now the creation of a new body politic under the Commonwealth. Um, however, um, as you know, Mr. Chairman, through our subgroup, um, the town of Harwich was able to convey to the other towns um, some structural concerns, if you, for lack of a better phrase, uh, that the town has with the proposed agreement, um, the governance do document itself. And I think that um, uh, after the discussion we had today, I was able to work with uh, counterparts in Dennis and Yarmouth to create um, amendment, the proposed language amendments to that contract, excuse me, agreement that I'll be um, uh, discussing with council tomorrow and reaching out to um, the engineer um, to advise them of this for our next subgroup meeting on the 20th. Uh, it's my further hope that um, this board would have an opportunity next Monday night to see the proposed agreement um, to start the discussion on that as well re yeah. regarding the article. Yeah. So there's, um, you know, there's been a delay, if you will, but now we're getting into it um, in, in an earnest effort, uh, not the least of which is the discussion that these two gentlemen will walk us through, but then also the legal document itself next week. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. All right. Um, so I guess I'll just kick off with, um, you know, the agreement obviously is still in process, but once the agreement is is executed and put before the voters of the town of Harwich at town meeting and um, following that, the town is going to be asked, should it pass, to make a flow commitment to the DHY entity. Um, and that flow commitment is going to be made by each community individually, Harwich, Dennis, and Yarmouth. And those figures are going to be what the plant is designed around for this first build out. Um, so what you have in front of you are two individual. Just one thing on the, the flow commitments that are made by each town will determine the cost sharing that each town um, goes into um, for the plan itself. Right. Sorry, Dennis. And to expand on that a little bit more, you know, right now a as the, the conceptual DHY plant has been around, designed around Harwich contributing about 600,000 gallons per day in this initial phase, which accounted for 15% of the design capacity. Um, what I have before you this evening, or Griffin and I have in front of you this evening, is two concepts of what we believe to reasonably um, construct in the first era of the, the treatment plan over in Dennis. Um, that plant right now, the full build out at 40 years is going to be designed to be a six and a half million gallon per day average plant. This, this first phase is likely going to be less than half of that. So to just speak to the two um, options that are in front of you, there's the, the DHY phase three, what I'm referring to is the Route 28 corridor and the Harwich Center option. Um, so one of the big things that drove the decision to look outside of, of phase three were some of the upfront short-term costs and the volume of gallons that we would be generating for those costs. So Griffin and I have been asked to explore an option involving Harwich Center and what that might look like. So from there, we had went into the CWMP and identified areas within the Harwich Center area along that, within that watershed and identified what we believe to be 
reasonable construction contract sizes. And now, Ken, if I may, uh, just to interject, and the reason why we looked at that area, um, we looked at, we went back to the CWMP, and you know, one of the things we've heard about is you know alternative technology, and you know, making sure we're we're flexible when when potentially new technology comes up in the future. So what we looked at was we looked at option 7A, scenario 7A from the CWMP, which basically respects um, the alternative um, technology um, implementation as part of the, the, the sewer um, CWMP. That also, you know, even with that alternative technology being implemented um, almost widespread across the town, it was also identified that I think it was about 417,000 gallons of sewer would still need to be, of, of sewer generation would still need to be sewered to meet the requirements of the TMDL. So in looking at, at um, the scenario 7A, we were able to focus on areas that were, that per the CWMP were required to be sewered, whether of alternative technology or not, but that would allow us to, um, so to speak, kick the can down the road on alternative um, technologies. And to expand on that, right now is, is you know, the IA technologies aren't at a position where they could be implemented and fully um, proved out so that we could utilize them. However, if you, if everyone has a computer in front of them tonight, if you imagine what computers and cell phones looked like 15 or 20 years ago, you know, that's, that's the time frame for this first build out for the, the treatment plan. So we're really looking at a time period of 15 to 20 years that we need to make a flow commitment for. Um, we also need to determine what is a reasonable amount to fund over the next 10 to 15 years with the costs for the construction and the plant as well as our phase two obligations. So from, uh, and I just want to touch on the methodology that, that Griff and I had used to put together these figures and numbers for you um, because I think it's important that, that we touch on that because the Route 28 corridor um, I guess concept was, was originally provided by CDM Smith to the, to the town of Harwich. And when we were asked to explore a Harwich Center option, um, we had to devise a methodology to try to put a, a dollar figure for e this area. So what we did was take the best information we had, which was contracts one and two from East Harwich, and we reduced from there to get a cost per parcel basis, a uh, cost per parcel for sewering. And that was really what we used to quantify the value of each of these four areas in the Harwich Center um, option. I also pulled 2019's water use data from each of these individual contract areas. And those are the flow values you see on these maps below. I did the same thing also for phase three Route 28 corridor, just as a, a double check so that we have 2019 water use data for, we're, we're comparing apples to apples as far as, as water data or, or flow data, if you will. Um, I, I then prepared the, the table that is also attached that goes a little bit deeper into the figures um, in, a compare side by side comparison of the Route 28 corridor and the Harwich Center corridor. So I did go through and pull from all of the recent presentations that were given by CDM Smith and the different various PowerPoint presentations to try to get the most up to date uh, cost information for the Route 28 corridor. And again, the Harwich Center area was developed using our cost per parcel from contracts one and two. Just to touch on costs a little bit more, you know, these, we, we kind of looked at this in a gross level, and, and these, are, these are planning level costs. There's been a lot of discussions about costs throughout town, but, you know, these are intended to be planning level costs in today's dollars. You know, as we get towards construction and things like that, those will get more detailed, but, you know, we're just trying to create an apples to apples comparison with, with the information that we have available to us um, as it stands right now. Uh, Don, you have a question? Yeah. Um, <coughs> this is part two of the day. Uh, I made no, I didn't hold back with the uh, potential partners that there's some parts of the agreement uh, that, that I didn't feel comfortable with and I didn't think the board was going to feel comfortable with that had to do with governance. But then there's the engineering and the cost side of it, which I I is wholly our problem to decide whether or not this is apples to apples, you know, what we're doing. 
so the public understands, uh, and I know you folks do, I'm not even sure it's possible to do what I'm going to be asking you now, but two years, Michael's asked, I've asked uh, CDM Smith to give a cost comparison that was not an aggregate uh, all-in thing because you have to take <laughs> out certain parts of the comprehensive waste management sequencing and then plug this in and, and, uh, and put them in somewhere else uh, in the approved plan in order to offset. Uh, that's how we're doing this, essentially. We're shoehorning in something that wasn't in existence or even talked about uh, when that plan happened. What I'm looking for, uh, and I've said this before, the project cost is completely meaningless to me because if I have to pay upfront costs so that my grandchildren can save money, that's a whole different equation. He, he's got this all set up as a, a black box where the whole box winds up being equivalent or cheaper uh, if you swap it out. I want a year one, we go with DHY, it, uh, estimated to cost mm, uh, year one if we go with the comprehensive wastewater management plan as it currently is written it costs mm, and then go down one two three four five in the years to see where the cost recovery is so I would say that without in order to produce such figures right one of the things that we were referring to earlier that flow commitment so Harwich is going to make a flow commitment but we're we're really a very small component of the DHY when it comes to flow, right? So if if we're talking about cutting our flow commitment from the original projection of 600,000 gallons per, you know, per day to say 300,000 gallons based on what we believe to be affordable. If the town of Dennis and Yarmouth stay exactly where they're at and they decide that they don't want to change, the plant size is going to pretty much stay the same, right? But our financial obligation for that plant would reduce in half because we're sending not 15 percent now we're sending seven and a half percent so until we know and, and we did start to have this conversation with our counterparts in Dennis and Yarmouth about talking about flow commitments and what we believe to be reasonable to ask of the taxpayers over the next 15 to 20 years and the same conversation with with Dennis and Yarmouth and until we get a flow commitment from the other two communities and, and we aggregate those, we won't know what our share of the plant is. My problem with that is the moment you vote for this, you're in for 15 years. I would say we're in for 15 years, but we have no financially, if we commit zero gallons, then we don't own anything. That's for the not plant true. Costs. You, you owe the pro rata 15% cost of building the plant. That's, that's baked in the cake. I'm just saying I would disagree at but the I, end of you know, 40 years. Well, I've asked that question of the participants, and they, they agree that we're in for that. Uh, my uh, problem is that over the 40-year arc, we're, we're obligated to get a certain amount of uh, flow done. That's what the state certified. That's how we got the plan approved. For 40 years, we're going to do this many gallons in all these areas. So throttling back so that you can shoehorn the project into a pocketbook uh, is anathema to that because ultimately you may or may not come out to the same number of gallons at the end of that uh, if, if you're just pulling off the accelerator pedal and saying, you know, we can only sell 7.5% to the public because they're not willing to pay for 15. I, oh, I feel you 100%. I was, you know, we were asked to produce, you know, a Harwich Center <laughs> phasing option. Um, well, I get it, and I'm sorry for even asking this, but I, I, I made the comment to Joe this afternoon, and I said I would say it tonight. Even, even though I've been helping to negotiate this, I myself am not comfortable to vote it in the affirmative unless I know that it's going to cost this to do it this way and that to cost to do it that way by year, <coughs> not by project. Yeah, I mean, it was my understanding. My understanding, and I know we, we do have a legal opinion on some of the percentage and how that how that's shared, but it, it touched on what happens after year one. Um, I think it would be worth asking if the town says yes and signs on to the agreement and we make a flow commitment of zero, that I don't see how we would be responsible for any, any dollars associated with the plant, but that's... Okay. Uh, Michael? Thank you, uh, and thank both of you. 
finally the right people are at the table in my mind. Uh, I've been asking for it for a year, so I'm very thankful you're both there. Why would any town agree to go into business with us if we said if we put zero flow going into town meeting? No, no. That's like having one foot in the door and the rest of you on the other side of the door. So uh, why, why would we as a board even bring that to town meeting? So as far as DHY, just based on your rough calculations, we're looking at the, the design is actually stuck in 2020 still on this chart, which would be 2021. That's 1.5 million. So let's just say it's 2021 to 2023. We've calculated $50 million. That's, that's one number. 2025 to 2027, we've calculated another $10 million. So that's in the next five or six years. That's, that's a piece of this. The second piece of this is the legislation. And it'll be interesting to see what they came up with today. We, we haven't heard it yet. I, <coughs> I'm very reluctant to give up control from the Board of Selectmen to any organization on anything anymore, really, because Dennis and Yarmouth have fought with their school committee for decades. Uh, Monomoy and Chatham, we've regionalized and we gave control over those budgets to those two schools, and we still can't get a very responsible budget out of them. Um, and there's other examples as we go. So it, it would probably be a miracle to get me on board with this in the next 56 days. And I don't understand how we could even be, I don't even think we could, should still be talking about it because 56 days to finalize an agreement, have our legal counsel review it, our legal counsel that actually is working for the Tritown agreement, which is a little strange to me, so I would think that we'd want to get extra legal counsel on that. So 56 days before we go to town meeting, we're going to educate the town on spending another $60 million. And then let me just throw in the last. This board has to pick its priority because we've also failed in East Harwich. We $8.4 million mistake, which we have apologized for, but we still haven't done anything about it. We have to finish East Harwich at some point because we spent 6 and a half to $7 million of taxpayer yeah. dollars to make a deal with Chatham that our fixed costs are never going to go down. They're getting it whether we have 75 people hooked up or the 600 that we said we were going to have hooked up. And we, I had asked for it four months ago. We've never had a meeting with Chatham to discuss whether or not we could hook up other parts of town to their, to their facility. And we've never asked them, are you going to be upset with us if we don't send you 200 more homes? Because they factored all their cost into a, a negotiation with the town of Harwich. They factored their cost into <coughs> 600 homes. So thanks for the update. We got a long way to go to even get close to convincing this board member that this makes any sense at all. Well, and that's why we're starting. That's why we're. That's why we're starting on this. And I. I guess in the interest of future discussions, maybe. <laughs> I um, you know, what, what you have before you is, you know, two two options. You know, one starts at forty-one. You know, totals over the next twenty years for the collection system construction alone. I just want to be clear that I, these numbers on the, on the maps don't include the plant or, or other <laughs> wise. But for collection system um, information only, we have a, you know, one option at 41.4 million and one at 64.7 million. Now, I would like to be able to provide this board with, with all the answers to the questions that they have. One of the things that would help me do the best that I can in accomplishing that is we don't have to pick a, a Route 28 or a Harwich Center option now, but I think having some consensus on a flow commitment should we in entertain the idea that will help me in, in maybe answering some of Don's questions as the conversations progress with Dennis and Yarmouth, because once they, they can get further into what their flow commitments are going to be, we can start to look at a, a revised cost for the treatment plant. Because to Michael's point, part of that, you know, 60 million in that first couple, first three or four years here is 20 million of it is, is for the plant. And if Dennis and Yarmouth stay the same and we, we reduce and it is based on flow commitment, that 22.3 million could drop down to 11 point some million. So could our representation. So, well, and that's the, it, it yeah, would. Yeah, yeah because well, I would yeah. say, hey, I don't think they should have two delegates. Well, they're, right, and we, we did talk about that internally, and I guess one of the good things may, would be that if, if 
boards unanimously support the agreement, does go to town meeting and vote, and, and the votes are taken, the DHY entity is formed at that point, which we would be requested then a flow commitment from. At that point, we've already got two commissioners. But the, Mr. Chair, they, they have, they maintained both on Friday and today that they could e we could either be a partner or we could be in, but the 15% is, the, is currently, like to Michael's point, they're 56 days uh, to agree to this. We're not negotiating right now a, a, as to what portion of the flow. We're way past that, way past that. One other side note, if I may. The other two communities have also expressed in our internal discussions the, I don't want to speak for them, but they're also looking at their flow commitments, and they might be thinking about doing something similar to we are, is maybe not over committing, maybe not building this size and scale of a plant on day one, and instead, you know, seeing what, so we, we have, through all of our conversations, I believe that we are kind of all on the same page, correct me yep. if I'm wrong, but, you know, this has been kind of the, uh, Bill? And then, uh, well, if I may, just to build off of that last sentence, and I just want to make, remind the board and, and the public at large, so the, the two gentlemen at the table this evening um, have only been at this officially yeah. for four months, and what they're doing is not their day job. Yeah. And so the amount of work that they've gone through just to amass the appropriate data to then make informed decisions on is remarkable, and it can't be overstated how much work they've done. But if I could speak for them and for myself, given that we're now in the process, we've entered the equation in late November of 2019. We need to rely upon this board for direction in everything that we do. We've, we've done as much as we can do, working within the subgroups and working with our peers. Um, I will tell you that, um, you know, we're, I think we might be the size of a, of a Shih Tzu, if you will, uh, but we have the impact of a Doberman. And uh, in, in the discussions, and I will tell you that I've said that to Dennis and Yarmouth, and they have been responding to our concerns. They have been willing to meet with us at every step of the way to have these follow-up discussions on the agreement, recognizing that this town and this board hasn't had the benefit of that prior. But I want you all to know that staff is making extraordinary, extraordinary efforts to give you all the information you need to make your informed decisions on the proposed article and anything else, and then we can deal with the, the effects of whatever we decide. But there is tremendous amount of work being done by these two gentlemen, and not the least of which is presented tonight. So I don't want anyone to think that our wastewater superintendent and town engineer are trying to argue to you or convince you to take a certain course no, no. of action. Actually, this is refreshing. Yeah. Nothing yeah. that I'm I just, saying has I just want to make sure everyone understands yeah. you, guys, uh, you guys are doing terrific work. Let me get to... Uh, and you. Uh, I'm intentionally keeping it a little quiet because I've been involved in weekly meetings. So, uh, Ed. Okay, so what... In our existing comprehensive wastewater plan that anticipates we build a plant, what's our flow commitment to that? It would be a million, because I think we're sending 300,000 per day to Chatham. I believe the, the full yeah. was 1.3 1, 1. for the whole time. That's the next phase. No. Uh, no. no. It wouldn't have been. It would have been, I believe, phase four. But so it's, uh, so right. we're, we're, we're anticipating that to meet the requirements of the waste that we're going to have to send a million gallons for treatment somewhere. The full build out was 0 0.98 million or 0 0.980,000 gallons, yes, to and, DHY. And uh, these two options account for 179,000 in mm -hmm. one and 200 and something in the other. <coughs> so. Where's the rest? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good question. What are we putting in our pocket? And <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> so it. <laughs> Barnstable and leaving it there? Yeah, a couple things. So, you know, what what we really wanted to focus on is what we what we what we kind of have control and I don't want to say I don't think control is the right word. Um, we have to make a flow commitment for the first construction phase of, of this 
treatment plan, um, which is going to last, you know, uh, the, the design <coughs> monies for the treatment plant are slated to be requested for the upgrade in 2035. That's a two-year design to period. Expand yeah. the plant so it can increase. Right. And supply. there may be more than one expansion. And, you know, if uh, Yarmouth was saying, as an example, well, if we run the backbone down and this whole neighborhood wants to pay a betterment and increase the sewer, you know, capacity so that they can have sewer, well, Yarmouth's going to have to pay for the upgrade, and it may be a little upgrade. What we were talking about at our last meeting with our counterparts was trying to sync up what we expect to be a reasonable kind of target end date so that we can all link up, we can build a plant where we all have the same end date. If they're th understanding that there may be other things that come along the way over the next 20 years that may require an upgrade or two, but the, the big upgrades we're trying to, to slate together. Now, the so that's why we really focused on this, what you see in front of you, because it, it, it was our opinion, I guess, based on East Harwich, understanding the, the town's people's positions and how much money this is, this is costing, the tax increases. Um, it also takes into account the feedback we've been getting about IA technology, and this allows uh, you know a decision tree to be made in you know 15 years or so when we have to go build a new treatment uh, upgrade to the treatment plant. If we went with Harwich Center, we can say, okay, if IA technologies prove themselves, yes, okay, we can explore that option. Or no, we still haven't had you know we don't have one that that is we can implement here. Then we can go with an expansion on the sewer plant. Um, you know, but we're really trying to focus in on this first construction phase of the treatment plant um, because once we get beyond that we're 20 plus years out and costs are just I, I wouldn't know where to start uh, Michael and then I'll, uh, I'll pass if anyone else uh, can't answer some of my questions Ed uh, yeah just a, a I'll, I'll, when you're done I will comment okay, so um, these phases take us through, through 2037 <coughs> which would be the end of the first phase of the, the plant construction costs. Um, if my memory serves me, our comprehensive wastewater plant um, had us hitting our, our eventual goals that uh, at, what, um, 2055? Something like that. So there would be time for one, another 15-year plant. Yeah, and which if, if we need to, we instead of only uh, building capacity for, I don't know, 200,000 gallons, we're then going to be looking at building capacity for 800,000 gallons. Well, we had, okay. you know, we've been working with Larry, obviously, a lot, on, you know, through this process and, and with some direction, you know, and the, the thought initially was, you know, looking at a flow commitment, should everything fall into place? Of around you know three or four hundred thousand gallons in this in this short term, um, you know there's one of these options is is at 219, another one's at 180. Um, you know there's there's room there if we wanted to explore adding other phases or if we commit to 400,000 and we get out 15 or 20 years and we still haven't hit that mark, well we can still expand the sewage, sewers in Harwich and not pay for a plant upgrade because we haven't met our full capacity yet. And when we talk about capacity and plant design, there isn't always a direct correlation between flow and cost in the sense that at some point you have to just put another clarifier. It's, it's, it's not like, okay, once we go from 1.1 million gallons a day to 1.3 million gallons a day, it's only an it's, it, Throughout the design process, there are thresholds at some point where you have to add another tank, right? And the tank is the tank, and, and that's the cost of it's the, the tank. The expense increase. Right. Yeah. A right. uh, couple comments. Just, just, just quickly uh, review. We, we looked at a CWMP where we're, uh, as, as mentioned, we have a sewer plant going in, and uh, uh, you know, landfill basically to do everything out that's not going to Chatham. And then we have an opportunity to look at DHY and have a regional plant, which saves us a significant amount of money. 
uh, both in the capital expenses and in the uh, operation. Uh, at the time, we had a discussion about uh, moving what was phase four, the upper, the northern part of Pleasant Bay watershed to Herring River to take advantage of uh, DHY and keep the cost. Uh, my concern with that is, is that uh, it, we didn't get a lot of bang for the buck. If we look first at Route 28 as a possibility to get more, more uh, 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 visible or more action going on. And then we uh, have a lot of interest in Harwich Center. And it turns out we're about the same distance from the uh, uh, pump stations to get the DHY from Harwich Center as we are going Route 28. And that would be a big boon for economic development for, uh, for Harwich Center. What you excise is that uh, we've been going through now and Dan Griffin has been uh, looking at is uh, from a DHY perspective, they're basically only interested in our, in our flow. How big is the plant? We're in control where we, how we collect it. So we could put it anywhere as long as we get, get that flow. As Dan mentioned, uh, our commitment uh, for the first part at least is 600,000 gallons per day in 50% of the plant, of the 15% of the plant. If we look at Tawai Center, for instance, that, that flow reduces to uh, 300,000. And uh, I think you inferred this, we're, we're reluctant to uh, go to uh, speak for other towns, but if we reduce our flow in half, I think there's a reasonable possibility that the other towns will reduce their flow as well. So we spend a lot less money in the first capital phase. And I know I was speaking to uh, Brian Dudley at EPA DEP about this, you know, right now the, uh, the plant is uh, in two phases. You know, big initial phase now, there's no reason they couldn't build the plant in three phases to keep our expenses down uh, going forward. So this whole effort is try to get something done to move us to, to uh, meet our commitments and, and reduce the price and have some economic value. So that's why we're throwing this out here. Uh, Michael, to your point, just very briefly on uh, uh, adding to the uh, Chatham agreement right now, uh, we're uh, tied into uh, the Pleasant Bay uh, watershed. There is an aspect in there that would allow us possibly to move to the Great Sands uh, area and some other, and maybe expand it beyond that, but that would take a vote uh, from the Char uh, Harwich Board Selection slash Water Commissions to do that, uh, which is a real long shot because it doesn't uh, help their, their commitment to their town that they would do all they can to clean up Pleasant Bay. You mean Chatham? Chatham. Uh, their commitment to Pleasant Bay. And so what we're trying to do is look at, we're, we recognize and we've had big discussions about the cost. What can we do to move and take advantage of the regional aspect and do it as inexpensively as possible and still meet our commitments. Uh, Don and then Ed and Michael. It, you and I both agree we're coming at this from a completely different direction even though we're going to the same meetings. Uh, my concern all along was how does this work so that we don't break the bank? I mean. It, the borrowings, I'm not looking at the flow, I'm looking at the borrowings and how can we keep them level so that uh, we've already ramped up and, and we're gonna be ramping up even more than we expected to uh, when we go back to the 8.4 million. So my problem is that it kind of kicks the can down the road if you reduce the flow because at the end of this plan, you still have to do everything you said you were going to during the entire plan. <coughs> and somewhere, we're gonna have a spike. Uh, the other problem is, and I know I've said this now twice at those meetings, uh, so I could hear them tell me as opposed to it's my opinion because I'm reading the plan. When the plan gets accepted, everything that you guys say uh, are, are saying is commendable, but you cease to exist. There is no working group after a town meeting if we accept the plan, accept the uh, DHY construct. At that point, commissioners that get appointed by the towns get to determine what it is that you're talking about. So yeah, our, any our people, anybody yeah. sitting in this room can say anything they want to, but the problem is that after May, all bets are off because uh, the design of the plant and the way it operates and who gets what uh, flows and everything is determined by what we ask, 
but they have to accept. I mean, it, it, uh, we no longer control how this works after the plan, after the agreement is approved. We control all the collection phases. Is that what yeah, but saying? we'd have to send it somewhere. Well, that's the point. That's why we're yeah, okay. Uh, I just one of the Don, yeah. Well, Dan, yeah. one of the other considerations that we put into the, this second Harwich Center option was that the DHY or the the Route 28 corridor section didn't really generate a significant amount of flow, so it, it was the opinion of the, the people at the table that it would be very difficult to ask the taxpayers to fund a $22.3 million plant and really have nothing to send them until the, the 28 plan in 2037, we add 132,000 gallons per day. So that was another component in the Harwich Center option was to actually send flow where we're sending the money. So. Just a couple points, because I know we're going to debate this heavily coming up. Right. Um, 56 days till town meeting. Yeah. We're thinking about Howard Center. We're thinking about Howard Port. We're thinking about 300,000 gallons. We're thinking about 600,000 gallons. We're, it's more important to the other two towns, because they really haven't done anything yet. We're $30 million into this already, with another 8.5 to 10 to finish what we started. And let's not forget, we picked East Howard for reasons, not just to pick East Howard. We picked it because that's where they detected nitrogen in the wellhead. That's uh, the, the biggest right. embayment that we have. So let's not lose sight of why we picked East Harwich. But again, 56 days for us to agree and then sell it to the public right. and go to right. town meeting with a trust us. We're going to pick an area in town and sewer it at some point. And, and I, I, I don't, I really, maybe you'll surprise me. I don't see it. I, uh, yeah, please, uh, use the microphone for us. Hi, Clara McCarty, East Harwich. Um, I, I don't want to be that annoying, uh, ignorant person that takes up time, but I, I'm, I'm really working hard, and I'm really worried, and I'm trying to be relevant. And um, I, li I live in East Harwich. I'm, I'm disturbed about polluting Pleasant Bay. I care. I'm not going to contribute any flows. We're going to put in a composting toilet system called the Phoenix. We went and saw it in somebody's house in Osterville. Beautiful, fancy, high-end home, really, really functional, easy-to-use system. And we're going to use a gray water system, and we're going to irrigate, and we raise ducks. So we're going to have a duck pond with our bathing water and we're going to irrigate with gray water and be really careful about what we put in our water. So you might calculate based on what our flows are, how much water we're using, but it's not going back out, even if we're forced to hook up. And I just want to bore you with all these details because uh, I went to a climate change forum at St. Christopher's recently. They said, bring up climate change at your selectmen's meetings. No one's talking about this. I can't think of a plan where we're talking about 30, 40 years from now without thinking about what the climate scientists are saying. I know that climate change is becoming politicized, left-right thing, but just, just to be rational and reasonable, even if they're not totally giving us exactly what's going to happen, we, to be reasonable, we have to consider some of this stuff is coming down. If climate change is a real consideration and we're looking into the future, Fresh water, fresh potable water is going to be a much more valuable resource than what it is currently. We're not going to be trying to get flow to send it away to a plant. We're going to be treasuring the water resources that we have here. It's going to become valuable. If people really care about the environment, we're not going to be just thinking about nitrogen. Uh, an estuary is about a whole lot more than just nitrogen. A pond is about more than just phosphorus. There's a whole picture to really being green, to really cleaning up the environment, we have much better alternatives than sewering. Sewering is an outdated, very, very environmentally costly solution to human excrement. We can do better. I am going to oppose DHY. I hope that many of my peers are, and I believe that some will. I think they need to be more informed. I don't think we've been getting the whole story. I don't think we're thinking big picture about stuff like this. 
but we do have alternatives. Gray water, sus gray water is really being done a lot in California where they have the droughts and they're desperate for water. But these systems, they already work well. They're not well known. People do have, you know, the CWMP says we're not considering composting toilets because of cultural reasons. And I know people think of like these crazy hippies and their, you know, unsanitary conditions and blah, blah, blah. But it isn't like that anymore. It isn't. It's really doable. And um, I wish that we would explore those things. I wish that more people in town knew more about them and that we could, you know, as that you as our representatives could bring that information to people and encourage people to open their minds about it. And I think going forward, there's going to be incentives to reduce carbon. Septic sewer treatment plants are enormous carbon polluters. In the EU right now, they're trying to crack down on them because of that element of it. Then what about the contaminants of emerging concern? This is not even addressed in our CWMP. It just says, you know, you just, you take the uh, solid waste and you just dispose of it. It doesn't say how we're going to dispose of it. The cost for disposing it will increase. It will increase a lot. We have no reasonable, no reasonable hope that we'll be able to continue to just take stuff and ditch it. Just like the solid waste problem that Link has brought up, the exact same problems are going to be coming up with, uh, and also the recharging, the PFAS chemicals, the microplastics, the pesticides from pet flea treatments, all of this stuff is not dealt with with the current types of treatment plants, and it's going to be something that the more they can measure parts per million, the more they're going to have regulations to control it, and we're, it's going to be expensive, extremely expensive, and it isn't the truly ecological solution. I know we've been, it's been given to us in just this, you know, Julie Kavanaugh always just said, we have to sue her. We have to do it. We're getting sued by the EPA. That is not the whole picture. It's not true. This is not for the environment. This is for development. Putting in these systems will allow increased development, and that's not in the best interests of everyone. Okay. Let me, uh, uh, I'm going to disagree with you on some of that, but not, not right tonight as we go forward. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Tonight, though, I take, uh, thank you for presentation. We have, uh, to Michael's point, I, I agree. If we can't paint a full picture before town meeting, then we can't proceed. But that's what we're trying to get through now. And it's, and it's, we're coming up against wild mass postponement. It's just not us. Uh, Yarmouth and Dennis have also been had big discussions on, you know, what they do with the golf course, for instance. It's, you know, they've, they're going back and forth. It's a difficult decision. So maybe we, we're, maybe we won't be ready by spring, but we're going to, we're going to try to get as much information as we can and go forward in some respect. And, you know, we always need to worry about IAs. It, it just briefly, the difficulty we have at the moment is, is that we're required to meet regulatory demands because uh, I guess that's enough said on that. And, and, and right now, none of the IA systems meet those demands, those requirements. Now, what, what started this discussion was, is because I agree with you, the CWMP states uh, in that uh, we're hoping for uh, new technologies going forward. I think uh, Dan brought it up initially, is that even though it states that, by the time we build the sewer plants, it locks us into sewering for the whole program. And so part of the uh, reason that we started looking in, you know, credit here, uh, about phasing it in in a slow way is not, was not only economical, economics, but it was, it was to be sure that we don't lock our, lock ourselves into sewering if something else comes up that works really well. And if I can expand on that, just, and Griff mentioned it earlier um, when we started the discussion, but when we developed scenario 7A, well, when we deserve, uh, so apologize, when we developed the Harwood Center option, we utilized scenario 7A in the CWMP, which was the IA scenario. It was the one in, in the area that we delineated and demarked on this plan was the area that if even if we used IA systems, we had to still sewer. You so mean special septic? Yes, IA systems. Not gray water and compost. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, those, yeah. Broadly speaking. But 
but there, the devil's in the details. Yep. There are a whole bunch of items. Right. Um, yep. I think we need a single discussion item meeting. It's just this. Well, we could bring an expert. I'm not an expert. Yeah. Okay, but that's for another meeting. We'll, we'll try to do that. Do we have enough information to start this discussion? And keep it uh, keep it going. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I know we have a big debate coming on. Yeah. We and did I make a lot of progress in the governance language, but that's kind of like the, the, the small the, portion. The, the, if I might, I, I want to hear um, from Don about the meeting today. Um, you know, because there's a lot of input here that we're sort of missing from the discussion. So, with your indulgence, Mr. Yeah, Chair, it's it's it, it, no, it's <laughs> really it's really quick. Uh, we had had a verbal agreement in uh, the working group that we were going to have language requiring to the maximum extent possible that all contracting for services and goods would be done competitively. For some reason, there was a resistance for that language to actually make it into the agreement itself. We met without the uh, CDM Smith today and we agreed to put that back in. The second thing that, uh, that I felt very strongly and I'm pretty sure most of the board members did is once this thing gets created, there was absolutely no way to have the public have any influence on the uh, financial actions of the uh, commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, I had pitched originally that when we get together in January and there's two from each town with a minimum of eight overall uh, that of the selectmen that would get receive the budget from the commissioners, that until they got an affirmative vote from the, uh, that combination of boards, that they didn't get the approval for a budget. It somehow got watered down in written language that, or they could give us the reason for why they don't agree with us. That's been taken out. We're back again to every January, there has to be an agreement, and it actually is somewhat punitive to them because it's in the commissioner's best interest to come up with a lean budget that everybody can agree to since the new language is going to contain uh, language in it that failing an affirmative uh, approval, they revert to the prior year budget. Mm -hmm. So they, ha they have motivation to try to, um, to come to an agreement with the combined boards. And I will point out to you because I'm also the, your representative to the uh, uh, Clean Waters Management Board uh, that off of Andrew Gottlieb's insistence that the legislation was really clear because some of the, some of the uh, towns wanted to do alternative systems. The way this is written currently, unfortunately, I mean, like it or not, the state uh, sewer revolving fund will not pay for alternative systems. You cannot get any of the money that's being generated by that special rooms tax and funnel it to anything other than a shovel-ready uh, sewer project. That's it. So in your thinking, the, the, the edges of all this are a lot smaller than you might think. That's it. Thanks, Don. Okay, this will, uh, we'll keep coming back on this and refining it and trying to answer these questions and see where we go. All right? Thank you again very much. That's good. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for all the work. Seriously. Uh, next discussion is uh, 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 budgets. You know, we had a uh, an all-day meeting on Saturday, and thank you again. That was a, uh, seems, like a year ago. seems like a year ago. I thought that was a very productive meeting. Uh, this says vote, but that's a standard phrase. We're not voting at all tonight. I just wanted to bring up some uh, some general discussion on the budget. If you uh, uh, bear with me some uh, uh, points that, I, that I've written down, and I'd ask you for comments to sure we continue this discussion going forward. In terms of uh, the financial side, uh, some of the questions, and we're hoping we get uh, approximately $70,000 uh, back from the school, which leads me to think if I look at some options that people were arguing strongly they're hoping we would restore, uh, there's a library to bring them back at a little under 15,000. Council on Aging, a little under 7,000. Uh, conservation, 5,600. Uh, health, 5,200. We had uh, 825, but Michael agreed to pay that out of his uh, <laughs> paycheck. And uh, 
so I think we need to consider those items because in some, you know, if we get the money from the school, that short money that brings back, I think they made a strong case for restoring those. Uh, we also uh, talked about uh, having further discussions on uh, uh, the uh, uh, carpool activity, I think, you know, of using uh, how we utilize the cars among staff. Uh, trying to think, I have some other notes here. Uh, cemetery, we want to bring it back. Was there a way that we could, uh, uh, they could work with the DPW as a backup? I forget who, Michael, you might have brought that up, but I want to bring that back as an agenda item, have a discussion with more details. Uh, I think, uh, Joe, we uh, uh, brought up people were more comfortable. We added money to stabilization and OPED as part of your budget <coughs> item going forward. We had a uh, long discussion on the DPW. Uh, Joe, it wasn't clear to me on your compromise. Is that built into the, into the budget now of uh, you restored some of uh, Link's budget? So what was presented on Saturday uh, by the director in his handouts would be the new number going forward. Uh, if memory serves correctly, the uh, DPW budget was increased uh, by $500,000 being offset by expected revenue to be generated by commercial MSW. Yeah. Um, and I believe if I um, read the finance director's email earlier today correctly, we were at a 0.33% increase uh, that change now gets us to a 1% increase, so still under 2% growth. And, that, and that's a compromise you have in Correct. So-called. Uh, for me personally, I, was a, I appreciate that. I was a little concerned in some of the things that were taken out of uh, DPW. I'm sure people aren't going to all agree with me on this, but uh, we took out a lot of maintenance items. And that, uh, I'd like to understand that a little better because in the past we've we can shoot ourselves in the foot by not maintaining the buildings, for instance, and getting into trouble. Uh, Michael? I have several comments on what you said, but just on that one while we're on that yeah. subject. We didn't cut things from other departments' maintenance items. The DPW building. DPW, I mean, I'm just looking at the. <coughs> and, and I'd like to have a better understanding of how that, uh, that proposal came forward and those budgets came forward, because it's my understanding they came late. And uh, yes. to, to Link and I, I asked questions that day about what we were able to accomplish inside yeah. of his existing budget throughout yeah. the town, uh, parking lot on Queen Anne Road, yeah. Sacrawtucket Harbor, yeah. Pet Cemetery, uh, any number of other projects, yet the proposed budget cuts only went in that affected other departments. So I would ask the board to ask the town administrator to work with Link and to try and uh, give us a better explanation on what <coughs> every single cut in that department had something to do with somebody else, mm -hmm. instead of the extra money that seems to be in that budget. But I would, I would say rather than debate that here, that should be the town administrator and an instruction from the board right. to better understand why we have to penalize department heads instead of look inside of the budget. We're, we're getting to the same end point. I'm uncomfortable cutting the uh, oh. uh, maintenance. So we need to look at the budget and see where we're at. There's other, I think your point is there's other places maybe cut and still keep the uh, uh, maintenance because we know from from past history buildings fall apart if we don't maintain them. I think just as we're uh, so we're at the same end point. And as we're on the DPW uh, project, sorry, Stephen. No, no the, the, um, I don't want to lose the point. I had no. asked a lot of questions that day yeah. about the dump operation and the 496,000, yeah. and and hopefully we'll get that answer before we just decide but to restore that. Five hundred thousand yeah. dollars, because it's not my goal to get under two percent. We get a very responsible budget given to us by the acting town administrator, yeah. and we're just going to build off of that. Right. So we really need to. I think we really need to look at everything and not yeah. just concede to some of this. Uh, to that point, uh, I'd ask. I put together some points. I'll put this what I have down. I'll send that out and ask you to uh, email me back the other points we want to be sure we discuss the agenda item so we have a good discussion going forward. I, I mean, I, I hear you. I mean, I, I think there was a lot of work that, 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 that did go into this process, both by on, on the part of Link uh, and the part of uh, Joe and Carol. 
Um, and let's not forget, I think, which was highlighted fairly clearly in the, in the budget discussion on Saturday, uh, the DPW has taken on the responsibility for an awful lot of extra stuff that they didn't used to have. So, you know, when you say you're cutting a department, this has now been part of the DPW. So, you know, that's, yeah. so anyway, I mean, I'm sure we can, you know, discuss let's potential changes to let's it. Let's get but those uh, points in and be sure we, but, we do. Uh, you know, there has been a lot of thought given to it already. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. And again, uh, I applaud the uh, Joe and department heads for bringing to us a budget that now we're, uh, we're double checking to be sure that we can work with it and get our job done. Uh, Ed, do you have uh, where I was not here over Saturday in my uh, great uh, joy of uh, what I get to do tomorrow is look at the YouTube video. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. Uh, Don? Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to build on what Stephen and Michael had said, uh, not c it can't get resolved tonight, but we got a memo, we all got a memo uh, relative to conservation and the frightening comment is uh, it highlights kind of what I've been saying all along is that we got a million dollars worth of uh, revolving funds. Stephen's right, stuff gets done and uh, they're holding a bag for the expense uh, and the real source of the cost is some other program. So I j it just absolutely blows my mind when I get an email that says, well, as you know, this is our revolving fund and it goes to us. Uh, here there too, uh, uh, in, another, in a previous time, the revolving funds dumped into the general receipts the next year and were uh, actually appropriated because they are not anybody's program's money. They're, they're the town's money. So ultimately we need to take a look at the bigger issue is like, you know, if you got a program and Lincoln's got to be able to do something for you and you got a revolving fund like the beach cleaning or something, should be sourced out of that, whatever fu whatever fee that's uh, generating that fund, well, and funneled to him as part of his budget. That's all I have to say. See what you see as what you, you know, see what I you did, Larry? well, <laughs> no, uh, you know, Don raises a point that has been so important to me because I've asked for years of getting uh, my definition fully loaded is what departments spend on other departments, so we know what's going on. Well, I had that's asked for quarterly. Quarterly we reports on it, but the other underlying problem is they also seem to feel that not only do they own the funds individually, but each committee feels like, well, we voted to appropriate it as if there's absolutely no input whatsoever from the Board of Selectmen or the FinCom. As nobody, once you give it for a generic purpose, the volunteers that we appoint have the purse strings on this and they just go ahead and vote for it so that's what they wanted and it's perfectly fine and you don't get to second guess us. That's gotta change. Uh, Michael? I thought I only had to argue with Angelo <laughs> about this, but. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, you can argue with. But argue if with we're gonna clean the beaches regardless of whether REC needs them or not, I'll end there. Good. We'll pay them with goodwill money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> Yeah, we also, I, I had a couple, uh, another one, doesn't matter. What I'd like for you to do is, is get me the, uh, Michael, you and I, we need to you know, <laughs> a drink of scotch when you argue more on this. But what I'd like to do is for you to send me, I'm going to put down what I have, send me uh, questions that you have on the budget, and I'll work with Joe to make it as specific as we can so we, we don't violate any open meeting laws, so we can have a detailed discussion on the budget and get, sure. and get ready. Okay. You might still be here by the time you have your agenda meeting. <laughs> Missy, where are we? We're down to uh, budget <laughs> one <laughs> timeline. Time <for> dinner. <laughs> Departmental reports, Time for dinner. Uh, Joe. Uh, first, I would just remind the board under uh, budget warrant timeline on uh, your meeting on Monday, March 16th, you'll be uh, in a joint meeting with the Montemoy Regional School District School Committee. Uh, they're scheduled to do their final vote on their final number on March 12th. Again, that number um, after discussions on May, March 16th or other dates could go down, but it could not go up. Okay. So they'll be presenting uh, jointly with you next week. 
And then the only thing I have for um, interim administrator's report, and I apologize, I missed this last week. However, I wanted to advise the board that uh, each uh, administrator or manager on Cape Cod received a notice from uh, Christy Senatore from the Cape Cod Commission about the 2020 District Local Technical Assistance, or D DLTA program, uh, that they're doing uh, funding for aerial imagery, which helps um, each town and the county track uh, land changes and things like that. Uh, there was a memorandum of agreement that was sent to all administrators and managers. Uh, the one that went to Harwich, I was asked as interim administrator to sign, which I did. I'm advising the board of that and the dollar amount uh, that the town is uh, responsible for is $2,766. So that's our contribution to the overall um, effort. Total town contributions is $50,700. The commission is giving 80,000 for a total project of 130,700. So that was a memorandum of agreement that was agreed to, but I can share it with the board if the board has concerns. Okay. Uh, I would ask you to share it with us and that way we can uh, read it at our leisure. Thank you. Uh, I, I have one comment. We, uh, we did meet uh, this morning with Chatham on our IMA. We uh, got part of that agreement. We're supposed to meet quarterly. We haven't been. We, we finally met. We will now. We're going much more active and raise actually the concerns that Michael you raised on uh, what happens. But what I want to, what I want to mention tonight is is that we our Board of Health had voted uh, a couple months ago to allow a sanitary uh, sanitarium. 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 Registered sanitarium. Registered sanitarium. Thank you, Griffin. As opposed to a place you go for happy rest. Uh, instead of requiring a, a design engineer, uh, Chatham does require a design engineer, and they, uh, we thought, we I thought a year ago they were going to move away from that, and, and last year they de they decided not to. Their board is, uh, wants to uh, stick with the requirement of a, of a design engineer. That uh, what that means to us is is that they can, we can't move ourselves unless Chatham agrees with our IMA. Uh, they've agreed to, uh, they being Jill and the selectman, uh, Dave Wickham was there, to bring that back to their board because they can vote and give us uh, the agreement. They can give us the ability to use the uh, uh, design, sanitary design, sanitarium, to get it right yet, and back away from the design engineer. So they're going to take that up, and hopefully they'll at least uh, allow us to go our way and they can stick with the design engineer. And that's, so that's their commitment to, to move that and try to look at it. Okay. So there we go. Michael? None. Bruce, none? Good. Ed? Uh, just to note that uh, this, um, we had our last selectman's meeting a week ago Friday. Um, the, the next one is this Friday. We sort of compressed it because of the uh, schedule of the state legislators, which we met with last time. This time it's a uh, meeting it will be held at Upper Cape uh, Technical School, um, and we'll be dealing with uh, um, town meeting, towns, and schools, <laughs> and how, how to, how to, uh, um, uh, to work together. Um, but uh, the interesting thing, uh, from the point of view is that we're u u starting to utilize the technical schools for the breakfast one because they're uh, very inexpensive and very good. And hopefully when uh, our new technical school here in Harwich opens up, uh, we'll be able to meet up there next yeah. year. Um, some of the private restaurants, is restaurants were getting charging room fees and administrator fees and getting way out of line. And just to clarify, that's the Cape and Island uh, selections. Uh, yes. Entertain motion to do. Don, did you have to uh, ask you? No, I, I currently, Mr. Chair, I have no life outside of this, so I have nothing to report. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you.